Hello everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new season here at WCS League for the first round of the GP3 Championship. Yep, brand new series, brand new format of cars and a brand new championship challenge for all of the drivers taking part in this series. We're in qualifying at the moment, it's just about to come to a close and Daniel Shiranku uh, for Wouters Automotive is on pole position at the moment. I'm Josh Anderson, and we should have a Sam Jones with us in the moment, but we don't at present, so I'll be taking you through the action till he gets here. Uh, but yes, in qualifying at the moment, Daniel Shiranku leading it for Wilders Automotive in that number 33 car at the moment. Jeffrey Fournier just two tenths down at the moment in P2, having a good race in his own right. Fournier, of course, driving for Epic Racing, and going to be interesting to see how he does. Bucky Hoekstra, our reigning Formula Champion, having won in the Formula 3 Formula Three last year, gets the number one this year, then that number one CM Tech car, third place, hoping to retain his title. And then in fourth place, we have, well, a new team in the WCS League, but not the same racing. We welcome Enterprise GP into the fray with Antonio Halanovic, a very well-known team Enterprise, and Halanovic a good driver as well. So they should be considered serious contenders for the titles as well. Definitely keep an eye on them this season. Daniel Brewer as well, the ever-present force in the second enterprise. Fifth place for Halanovic and Brewer. Very talented lineup. Stefan Ruel, Padel Tech Racing Team, is in P6 at the moment in the number 42. Ruel, of course, you know, very good last season as well. So another one to keep your eyes on. Lots of new drivers and teams for this season. And, well, it's going to be a cracking one, I think, because we've got these GP3 cars, something a bit different from the Formula 3s of last year. New challenges. And, well, it's going to be very interesting how we go. New point system as well, I believe. So, going to be even closer championship races. User Definitely point. keep an eye on the action as we do. Welcome now, uh, only slightly after the broadcast, star to Sam Jones. Great to have you with us, Sam. Yeah, hello Josh, good evening guys, uh, hello once again, and uh, sorry I'm a little bit late, but uh, at least I'm here now and uh, very much looking forward to uh, what's going to be an exciting new round to, to a new season. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're in qualifying at the moment, as we say, uh, 22 seconds to go in qualifying, uh, obviously with Shiranku on Paul and Fournier, Hoekstra, Jordan Brugman, Ruald Sahalanovic currently at top seven, and uh, well... I was just saying, really, it's looking to be a fantastic season. Brand new cars in these GP3 cars. Yeah, it's certainly... Uh, we've heard some very good things about these cars, and um, I think a, a case in terms of the driving, they're perhaps just a little bit more predictable to drive than the Formula 3 cars, and certainly a step up as well. So I think that's why uh, it's kind of reflecting here today with such a large grid. It's great to see a lot of new drivers, a lot of guys back again. And, uh, well, that's only going to make uh, all the racing so much better as well uh, we had a great start to the season and all the way through really last year uh, last season sorry in formula 3 it was only a few weeks ago now that it finished but it feels like an age already i've been missing it that much but with these cars we're going to be in for some exciting action as it looks like uh Shiranku is probably going to get pole here as we've clocked down to uh, the checkered flag now uh, a few guys still out on track for a one of them but i have a feeling he might have completed his start before the checkered flag waved Perhaps so, Fournier, as we know, very talented driver and uh, obviously, as we mentioned before, really, really talented last season, so he, knew, he knows his stuff in a Formula car. Go for TR Blue Fast Motorsports in the Formula 3, now moves to Epic Racing this season, so, you know, the team he's driven with a lot outside of WCS and I'm sure he's happy to be part of again. Yeah, certainly, and uh, a lot of teams, a few new teams as well, uh, quite a few new teams coming into this field as well, and uh, hopefully that brings a bit more life into the field as well. Uh, I think we've got a few guys that saw what happened last season, saw how good it was, and just wanted to get involved, and uh, uh, that's exactly what we want here in WCS, is uh, to get everyone involved, as many as we can. There's a few more guys coming across the field, Chris Kingsman, uh, he's just finishing his lap now. He's down in 22nd place. See if he improves. No, he doesn't. Uh, I think Fournier's still out there, isn't he? But he's going, he's crossed the line. He's going very slowly. So that's it then. Shranku takes the pole position, the first pole position of the season here in GP3. And what a way to do it as well. Nearly a quarter of a second up on Jeffrey Fournier. So a stellar job by him. And our champion, you'd have to say he's our reigning champion of sorts in open wheels, of course, in Formula 3 last season. Wopke Hoekstra takes third place. So he's continuing 
his uh, strong run of form that he ended last season in. Yeah, and, uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see how Fournier copes in these uh, Formula 3s. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how he depends on that because his new machinery for a uh, Whoop Q really, you know, it's he's a great driver. Let's not uh, let's not put it by the bush. He is a fantastic driver. That's why he won the title. But, you know, it's new machinery, different from the Formula 3s he won the title in. And the likes of Sharanku now making a resurgence. We're going to be able to see how he, how he deals with it. Yeah, it will be. It's going to be a case of... Uh... Was it just kind of a, a one-hit wonder, uh, so to speak? Was it just because of the car? Did he just uh, get uh, get get right in the type of machinery and the setup that he had, or is it down to genuine pace? And I think today that's going to be a big uh, question mark and one that we'll definitely find out the answer by the end of the day. And so far, he's looking pretty impressive, picking up that third place, uh, beating the likes of Roy Schroten, Lars Brugman, who's returned as well. Good. Good driver there, Stefan Ruel, another great driver. Daniel Brewer, was he Stefano, Niels Brookman also, and Chris Shepard. Uh, so many, so many big names in this field. Sven De all the way down in 14th place. Uh, Mike Quint is 17th, just picking out names here. There's such a big field to go through and so many drivers that uh, it looks like a few of them are out of place. But, uh, well, who, again, who knows what the order's going to be at the start of the season here because this is all brand new once again. Yeah, it is a very interesting uh, field, definitely. And, uh, well, it's going to be... Yep, uh, I'm half asleep today. I'm getting my teams wrong. Uh, I've just realised I made a couple of mistakes. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, it's Holland Racing Team, not Deltek. And uh, Stax Racing, not Epic. Uh, obviously, I think I think oh, very similar sort of mistakes. I mean, it's easy enough to make that mistake. But I'm half asleep today. That's what you're doing lead commentary, Sam. <laughs> well, uh, just about I am now after, of course, uh, missing the start. But, uh, yes, it's a... Uh, uh, going to be a bit of a difficult one today because we do have new teams i've seen the likes of positive sim racing who uh, of course are known in i racing and they were previously in fsr we've got enterprise gp a well-known team and a uh, good team to have back in racing as well so they're here in this championship now uh, i'm sure josh you're probably more eager died than i am uh, at uh, the uh, amount of new teams that we've got but certainly it's uh, looking good for this field to be able to bring in some new colours and some new drivers as well yeah new teams new drivers great to have ourselves you know extra newness in the field anyway <laughs> not just new cars new teams as well that's always a great thing to have around and i'm looking forward to seeing how they all get on because you know it's a lot different from last year's formula 3 and i'm still trying to acclimatize to which three other drivers and which teams we have but you know it's but it can be difficult sometimes when you've got such big change, but I'm sure we will as the season goes by. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, I could really do with a, a cheeky little sports guide. That would certainly help me uh, a long, long way. So if uh, anyone fancies getting one, uh, maybe sticking a few cars in a few names, uh, that'd be great. Also for the fans as well, it's, uh, it's important to be able to identify who's out on track. Uh, so a few guys have gone out there at the moment. We're currently in a warm-up session. It's a, a 10 minute session, we're about three minutes into it uh, right now. And uh, guys are just getting out there, uh, just uh, finding their pace. Yeah, people really just getting out there. We talk about new teams. Uh, we do have quite a few new teams in this season. Uh, GP3, we have Intrepid Autosport coming in, Enterprise GP, as we said. Uh, GP Performance is another one. So some teams I've heard of, some teams I've not. I'm interested to see how they get on. Positive Sim Racing, one of the big ones, of course. Very well known in the world of iRacing. Now making the switch over to, uh, well, not switch over, rather. They're coming into WCS as well. Uh, but, you know, we're taking on the R Factor 2 venture here. Uh, we got TG Racing as well coming over. And some returning teams as well in the form of Satellite Racing, TG Racing, Wilders on the Water, of course, reigning champion, uh, Whoopi Hoster driving for CM Tech Racing, his own team, of course. So, you know, some big names staying and some big names coming over. Looking to be a very, very good season. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, just pointing out to uh, Positive Sim Racing again, of course, they've managed to get some big scalps into their team. They've got Lars Brugman and Sven de Vries, two huge names there, and a uh, couple of drivers that we're used to seeing racing each other. So it's going to be interesting to see how they get on in a team and uh, whether it's all going to be nice and friendly all the way through the season or if it's going to get a bit hot under the colour, especially if they uh, are both looking to go for the championship as well. Yeah, we'll have to see how this uh, pans out for certain. I mean, it's going to be interesting, especially with the strategy element we have this year, Sam, isn't it? Because we've got a we got a bit of a pit stop thing going on. Yeah, we certainly have. It's uh, 
uh, a bit of a change, uh, something new to talk about, and uh, I'm, I'm sure, Josh, you've got all the details for us in terms of that. Yeah, of course, and, uh, well, of course, this year, slightly different than last year, and that there is still a mandatory pit stop, but this year as well, there is the added addition of a, that the drivers have to switch tyre compounds. They have to use the soft and the hard compound. There are two compounds on these GP3 cars. You have to use both in the race, and you can start on either. These cars also have launch control, so it's going to be easier for the drivers to get off the line. And, uh, yeah, so they've got to change tyres, they've got to make a pit stop, and they can refuel. So lots of strategy involved this year. Yeah, it's going to make for some real topsy-turvy uh, racing as well. It's going to be difficult to, for us to keep up, up with, uh, I'm sure, because uh, with the two different compounds of tyres, you're going to get uh, drivers who are quicker than others at certain points in the race because one tyre will be quicker than another. And, of course, durability as well. So you're going to see drivers starting to struggle uh, perhaps when they're on the less durable tyre and just uh, try to get it and stretch it as far as they can in the stint they're on. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the strategy plays out. I have a feeling that uh, eventually there might be one uh, fairly common-ish strategy to go, to go with, but uh, at the start of the season that's certainly not going to be the case. I think all these guys are just going to be uh, taking their best guess at uh, how to play this one out and uh, we'll have to see what happens. I think there's a visible difference between the tyres, isn't there? We've got a, a yellow marked tyre and a white marked tyre, I've noticed, on the sidewall. So uh, I think that will help us out to see uh, what each of the drivers are on. Yeah, going to be uh, very interesting to see, of course. You know, the harder compound is white walled and the softer compound is yellow walled. So it'll be easy to see who's on what. We'll be able to call the strategies the drivers are doing throughout the race. Obviously, as the season progresses, we'll learn even more and more about the strategies. So who likes to go what? As we saw with uh, the likes of, uh, it was, was Jernic Simicic last year, trying to extend his tyres as long as possible. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it, uh, we, we learn how each driver prefers to race. Yeah, and I think that what's that, that's also going to do is it'll stop drivers from pitting at the half uh, race distant mark, which is pretty much what we had for the majority of drivers, not all, but uh, the majority of them would all come in uh, between about two or three laps uh, right at the centre point of the race, and that kind of, that was good, but uh, it certainly just meant that we got a blast full of pit stops and uh, maybe lost a few things here or there, and uh, I think now with this bit more variation, it should be really uh, exciting to see some drivers pitting earlier and some staying out and then of course that means uh, drivers going to have to plan their pit stops carefully because if they come out in a whole gaggle of cars if they pit early then they're going to be in real trouble and we're going to have to see some brave brave overtaking and uh, that's going to be a difficult one around here as well isn't it Josh around Melbourne it's a, a tight twisty track uh, and not the easiest place to overtake. No, it's quite difficult in places to overtake, as you rightly say there, Sam. You know, it's going to be difficult for the drivers to actually get through at some points, but hopefully they'll be able to, because, you know, we love to see overtaking in the GP3 uh, series and Formula Series in general. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes and, you know, really just see how these drivers get on this track. There are places where you can overtake, there are turns and opportunities, very tight circuit in places, though. You know, it is... It's almost like a street circuit in that tent, even though it is a permanent facility based within Albert Park, of course. So it's going to be, I'm going to be interested to see how this goes, personally. Yeah, I really am as well. Um, uh, of course, uh, the GP, the, the WCS League, uh, are very much uh, like to promote overtaking. It's something that the, they really like to see. And uh, we've seen in the other series that we've uh, run previously, Formula 3s and uh, the BMWs as well, that. Uh, the overtaking has been certainly a possibility at just about every single track and that's due to the fact that uh, it isn't too difficult to follow uh, in any of the cars, which is good. There's always a bit of dirty air there, which uh, does make it a little bit difficult for these drivers. Uh, you always would rather be in clear air, but uh, it does help to keep the pack racing up, uh, keep drivers much closer. And it just means that when one driver gets past, he doesn't necessarily uh, pull away then from the guys behind unless there is a serious performance difference between the two drivers and then you do start to see a uh, driver pulling away uh, so it does mean that uh, we are guaranteed some very close battles and uh, hopefully I'm not uh, jinxing this or anything but uh, I think that's certainly what we're going to see throughout uh, both the races today. 
Yeah, you know, it could be that is the case, yeah, and, uh, you know, dirty airs, you see, it can make it harder for drivers to get through because it reduces your front end grip. The car just doesn't turn in as much. You use the tyres more, which means they wear out quicker, which means you have to make a pit stop earlier. So, you know, lots of problems these guys are going to have to deal with. Yep, there will be, as uh, right now, they're all just getting ready for the race, pretty much. We're down to the final 30 seconds of this warm-up. It's going quickly. I'm certainly excited to see those uh, lights go out uh, with 32 cars on the grid as well. We've got uh, 32 drivers in the session right now. Uh, that is really going to be exciting to see. It's going to be a bit busy as well, Josh. And, uh, what would your strategy be if you're starting in the mid-pack right now, uh, going down into turn one, two and three? It's going to be uh, a little bit difficult with all these all these uh, cars in the field. It's going to be very, very busy. Well, if I was in the mid-pack, I'd be panicking because that's not right for me. I'm not supposed to be in the mid-pack. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, what I would probably think is just right, try and get the best start I can get. Don't worry about everyone else. It's okay to lose positions. Positions are easier gained on the laps following the start than at the start when you might lose them. So take it easy. Don't risk anything. Try and hold position and keep a stable place. It's not the end of the world if you lose some places. No, so it's about uh, surviving the first lap more than anything. Uh, so we switch over to the race session now and... Uh, the guys will just jump onto the grid so we're going to have uh, a lot of guys to get through uh, on the warm-up lap once it gets through i'll uh, i'll start off and go through the first half of the field and josh will take over with the second half of the field so it gives you an understanding of where your favorite drivers might be uh, starting from this grid hopefully everyone gets onto the grid in good time we have just seen eric stamford has uh, left the race i believe he we're starting uh, near the back of the field, but uh, a bit of a disaster for him if he's gone now. Yeah, it could be problematic. Uh, there are 31 cars in this race, uh, 32 if you include him as well. Yeah, I think he is actually going to miss out Stanford here as um, the drivers take off for the formation lap. So I'll let you start off Stan Jones. Yeah, so here we go then. Daniel Schranku uh, leads, his, leads his field away then uh, from pole position with Jeffrey Fournier alongside our champion, Wookie Hoekstra is in third place with Roy Schroeder joining him on, in fourth. Lars Brookman for Positive Sim Racing is in fifth with Stefan Ruel in sixth place. Then row four is Atenia Hurel Her Ranovic. I messed that one up completely. I haven't said that for a few weeks. And Daniel Brewer, <laughs> both for Enterprise GP, so good debut qualifying for them. Wesley Stefano is in ninth with Niels Brookman in tenth place for Walters Automotive. Then we've got Chris Shepard for Multiforce and Aidan Paulson for Performance Racing. Thomas Hins on row 7 with uh, Tobias Olsen in 14th place. Uh, he had a good start to the season last season. Let's see what he can do here today. And uh, Sven De Vries, the second of the positive cars, is in 15th place uh, with Bjorn Lindbergh in 16th. And uh, Josh, you can take the rest away. Gladly. Terence Greg for TG Racing, I believe. He might not be because I can't quit any logos on the car. That looks like the standard car to me. But Greg 17th from Mike Quint will be starting for the pit lane and 18th for MDR. Interesting stuff for Quint there. Rob Mason starting 19th for Stax Racing. Then it's Matt Richards in 20th place. Then Gary DeVries 21st for Holland Racing Team. Then Chris Kisenbin 4 in Trepid Autosport in 22nd. Josh Downard in 23rd for Satellite Racing. Great pickup for Satellite then in Downard. Hopefully he'll be able to get a good uh, run here. And uh, we've got Peg 24th in the other satellite car. Sergio Azevedo will start 25th. Then it's Casper Andrian in 26th for Performance Racing. Then Joe Watts in the GP Performance car in 27th. Then Niels Voss 28th in the other Intrepid car. Rick Hawkstra in the second CM Tech in 29th. Then Marco van der Broek in 30th. Richard Brooks will start 31st in the second GP car. And I, th I believe Eric Stanford has now missed the start. So he will not take part in this race. But... Therefore, Rook Brooks will round out the field as he comes round the chicane here. Yeah, excellent job, Josh. We managed to get it done. Uh, some said we wouldn't do it, but uh, we did it. We got uh, the whole field in, and they haven't even got to the grid yet either. So, uh, excellent stuff there. So, Shraiku just fires it round that final corner, really lights up the tyres as Mike Quint heads out to the end of the pit lane, so he will be taking the start from the pits. And uh, who's your man then? I know it's going to be a difficult one to choose, Josh, but uh, who's your man for today? Oh, well, what, a, what a question. With the quality of the field, we have 31 drivers. Any one of them could win it, theoretically. But um, looking at the grid... Uh... You know, you got the really impressive ones. You got the, the drivers who are really qualified well. You know, the usual suspects you'd expect to be up there. Honestly, I 
I've, I've just got a funny feeling our reigning champion is going to come out on top here. So I'm going to go whoop your hooks during the number one. Nice. I'm going to stick for Pulsator here today. I think uh, he's going to carry on his good form from that excellent pole position. Daniel Shranku is going to take it. So the final few cars are lining up onto the grid there. Richard Brooks just slots into his grid spot in 31st place as it is now. So the lights are coming on. Everyone's got ready to go. The engines rise. And we are going. Shranku does not get off the line at all. Look at that. Hoekstra has to pop out and boy, he's going to lead them down into turn one. It's side by side behind him as Hoekstra looks up the inside of Shranku and pushes him out wide as well across the grass. And Hoekstra takes that second place and Shranku has dropped down into fifth because of that lost momentum. So Roy Schroten instead is into third and he's challenging around the outside of Hoekstra. Going into turn three, Lars Brugman up the inside though for positive sim racing. He takes third. Daniel Brewer into fourth, Schroeder down to fifth now, Sharanku loses another position all the way to sixth, so disastrous first few laps for him as Schroeder nearly loses it through there, and uh, Sharanku just has to avoid, but they all get through just about safely enough, Niels Brugman in ninth place, uh, falling a little bit further back, uh, Sharanku now looks up the inside of Schroeder, uh, going up towards turn seven and eight, he's on the inside now and takes that position, so that's one position gave back so far but Fournier leads by a second already uh, we're only halfway round the lap Hoekstra into second and he's already got Lars Brugman right on his tail as they go through turn nine it is uh, a good start for the top four top five now and it's uh, looking good we, at least we had a fairly clean one up front yeah very very clean start from the drivers and that's fantastic to see all managed to negotiate things perfectly oh. Uh, and oh what else happened Shranku and uh, Schroeder have come together and they've both got off the track. It looks like Shranku just lost it under braking. Oh uh, no! Schroeder and they've both got... Oh, there's carnage behind. There's more contact. And another car has gone round as well. I'm not quite sure who that is. That's Joe Watts. Joe Watts has uh, got it a bit stuck on the outside. But uh, gets it back going again, luckily. And I think everyone's just about going to live uh, oh, another day. I've just seen that back. Strong seemed to outbreak himself. And then uh, hit Shranku, yeah, and then uh, there was problems, I think, behind after that. But, uh, you know, everyone managed to avoid relatively well. But, yeah, Shorten and Shranku coming together, that'll be one for the two. It's Randall Fournier gets a bit of oversteer out of the turn there. And Hawks is starting to chase him down. This is a crazy start, but a brilliant one. Yeah, it really is. These cars definitely looking lively here as the drivers get the tyres up to temperature. And the top four have really broken away here. We've got uh, Fournier, Hoekstra, Brookman and Brewer all separated by one and a half seconds. And then it's a good three and a half seconds back to Stefan Ruar, who is now up into fifth place, of course, after all that drama down at Ascari. So he's definitely benefited from all of that. But right now, the top four are certainly leading the way head to tail as well. Fournier uh, initially got away from the three behind him, but uh, the ball managed to reel him back in. And Hoekster is within half a second of him now through the middle part of the second lap and looking like uh, we're going to have a good battle for the lead here. Yeah, Wopke Hooks are really giving full chase now as he comes down into the next right-hander. And it is really Holland versus France here, the battle of the race so far. And Wopke Hooks, I'd love to go on board with the Dutchman, our reigning champion in the Formula Series, of course. Just to see how he's tackling it, if that would be at all possible. Just because the way he's dealing with the track is always very interesting to see how drivers take on each corner. And, you know, um... You know, just to see how each driver approaches the track, it's always in plain to see as uh, Hoekstra himself is actually coming under threat from Brugman while chasing Fournier. It's not easy for our champion. No, it certainly isn't. Uh, it looks like uh, they're all just trying to find the perfect opportune moment. No one's going for a dive bomb at the moment. I've just seen that uh, further behind. Uh, Spent a brief move up in tonight. It's still a bit of a uh, rough battle, a bit of touring car action really between himself and Olsen. Uh, in the final sector, but uh, Debris managed to get through and moves up another place here as Brewer is all over the back of Lars Brugman right now for fourth place. And looking like uh, those two are having a little personal scrap and actually falling off Hoekstra and Borne just a little bit. Yeah, really, it's an interesting battle. Kick it up between Brewer and Brugman. Of course, uh, Brugman driving for positive sim racing, Brewer for Enterprise GP. Battle of the big teams then here. Both well known names and both debuting in WCS this year. So, you know, it, it, they are new to this league, but they're not new to sim racing. They were all right here up there, and they're proving a point if any point was ever to be proved. As uh, I see these problems down the back, I think Aiden Paulson has lost position. 
Yeah, Pulse has gone round, I think, a couple of times there, and a few other guys got caught up with him as well, so he's lost a ton of positions all the way back into 22nd place now. He was fighting in that top 10 battle with Olsen, Vries, and Gretsch, so uh, a disappointment for him, but uh, he'll just have to try and regain himself now. It doesn't look like he's taken too much damage on the outside, uh, I'm not sure about internally though, but uh, it seems to continue on that these top four are still pretty much no to tell. I think someone else has got off there. Oh, that's Niels Brugman. He's got off at Ascari this time, goes straight backwards into the barriers as well on the outside of the gravel trap and really struggling to get the car back around. And oh my goodness, there's more carnage going on around him as well. That's uh, Josh Downard going across the grass, nearly collected Brugman. Uh, clipping the wall as well, but gets it back going himself. Uh, but Niels Brugman all the way down to 23rd now, uh, a disaster oh, for him as well. We've lost Brewer, we've lost Brewer from the race, he has gone uh, for whatever reason. Daniel Brewer was chasing Lars Brugman there, and I think he, he just stopped. He just stopped coming out of turn two. He just came round and uh, yeah, he was accelerating out, and all of a sudden just went and... Did the engine go? Yeah, it just turned off. Cause the car just went? Was it a hard breath or anything? I don't know. That's a weird one. I, I, I can't explain that one. It's almost like, yeah, it's almost like an electrical failure, isn't it? It's just, uh, everything's just gone. Oh, I've just seen uh, James Kirk in the comments, of course, Enterprise TV ma GP manager, saying his R Factor 2 crashed. Well, that is a weird one. Wow, it's uh, usually, I don't know, yeah. Usually it's like a full usually it's instant, isn't it? Well, yeah. he just he just stopped. That yeah. is that is a weird way to crash, but hopefully we'll be able to get back in. Yeah, we'll have to see. He's probably going to lose uh, at least a lap uh, if he does manage to recover it, and he'll be all the way down the back of the field. He's the first retirement of the day then, if he is uh, out of this one completely. And uh, that's a, that's not too bad considering we've still got thirty. Of the 31 drivers running around in the field, but that does mean that now it's a top four, a top three battle instead of a top four battle uh, between Fournier, Hoekstra, and Brookman right now, all within a second of each other, and they're still pulling away from Ruel, who's now up into fourth place, and he's got uh, Hill Janovic all over the back of him for Enterprise as well. So good start for Hill oh, Janovic. Here comes, here comes Hoekstra down the outside, and he's going to try it on Fournier, but it's not quite going to work out for the Dutchman here. He's not going to get through, he's going to chase the Frenchman for a little bit more, but this is really hotting up between cars 1 and 37. Of course, Fournier is still good last season, and Hoekstra, our reigning champion. Both cars looking sensational, both in fantastic form, but do not forget Lars Brugman right behind them in that positive car, that number 23. Lars as much of a threat as anybody else on track. If anything happens between these two, or if they battle each other and start to lose track position, Lars will be there to strike as oh. it's close. And just as you said that, Josh, it has happened, hasn't it? Because uh, Fournier just got loose there. And uh, it looks like Hoekstra clipped the back of him, go through the Clark chicane. And that's allowed Brookman to go off his inside. And by turn nine, he's got the position. So Brookman up into second now. And already looking onto the back of Fournier as they head down towards Ascari. Fournier is having to go fully defensive. And Brookman's going to have to try and go around the outside. He's breaking super late. And just clips in. And, oh, Fournier's gone around. He's collected Hoekstra. Hoekstra just about gets away with it. Fournier's did a dangerous part of the track. Brewer has to dodge and go wide to avoid him. Uh, Fournier gets back going, but all the way down to fifth place. And uh, that was costly there. Uh, that coming together for Fournier, he has lost a, a huge amount of time as well. Yeah, Fournier was on the inside. I don't think he could have gone further inside if he tried really short of uh, hitting the apex. I think Lars just came over him just slightly there. That was enough to tip Fournier into a half spin. And he got it He got it back. He actually managed to recover it. And then Hoekstra had nowhere to go. He was already spinning. And he'd taken the inside line. He wasn't anticipating the contact. Fournier couldn't stop himself from coming to the right. Whoopke couldn't go anywhere. Had no choice but to tap him and then hit him again. Then he had to recover. That's dropped him right back down. And Hlanovic now was at an into the east. Disconnected, I think. The, oh, double, the double disaster for Enterprise. He's disappeared, hasn't he? Uh, certainly right. Uh, this looks like a more of a standard disconnect right now. As, uh, Chris Kingsman has gone round as well at the first chicane. Uh, so it's all happening here on lap 5, lap 6 it is now. Uh, yeah, there we go. Hiljanovic oh, is out. He's gone. So, oh, uh, Mason! We've lost, I think we've lost Mason as well. He's got no real wing on that uh, Stacks car. Something has occurred with Rob Mason and that looks like he's going to be out of the race, if not well down the order. Has Hiljanovic uh, gone? Well, obviously we know Hiljanovic's gone, but Mason might be joining him if he can't get it back to the pits. 
Yeah, Fournier's go around again as well, and he's lost a couple more positions down into seventh place now. So a lot of drivers all of a sudden are definitely starting to struggle here. Uh, Fournier's on the uh, soft tyres. I wonder if that's uh, caused him to lose some pace as well, and definitely would have uh, really slid them. Look at look at Mason. You're right, Josh. He's uh, really struggling, well off the track, and uh, well, he's going to be a good couple of laps down, even 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 if he does manage to recover it. He's uh, having a go. He's stopping his car, isn't he, actually? Or is he going to get back going? He is going, so he's going to go for it. But he's still got half a lap to go yet. That's going to be a long, long way back for him. He's a fighter of anything, Rob Mason. No matter what position he's in, he'll always try and get to the end. And that's an admirable quality about him. He will always give it a go. But, uh, you know, probably out of points contention now. But, uh, as oh, yeah, Brewer has gone again, unfortunately. We have lost Brewer again. So he's gone, and I think this one might be terminal. Ah, uh, that's a real shame, yeah. He's gone again he got back in and he seems to have gone so that's both the enterprise gp cars out of this race so it would seem and after such a good qualifying as well that's a real disappointment for that whole team really but uh, fournier now he's pitted uh, i think he had done a bit too much damage to his tires and he pops back out just into 19th place in between uh, uh, jacob peck and josh downard right there uh, downard's actually challenging fournier for position right now the two Satellite racing cars in, well, funny is it between the two of them? As down I goes to the outside, but just runs a bit too wide, cuts across the the gravel there, and unfortunately just got a bit too hot on the brakes. Yeah, just a bit too hot on the brakes. So easy to do in these cars. It's so easy to do. You can just lock them up, get a flat spot on the tyres, and you got to deal with that for the rest of the stint. So you know, you've got to drive these things carefully and quick, and that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, it's definitely. Looking a bit difficult out there. These cars look super quick around this track. Uh, it looks really exciting to watch. Just seeing a Sharanku make making a mistake as well at the Clark Chicane. He's gone uh, off onto the gravel, and so not a good uh, race one for him. After claiming the pole position, it hasn't really gone his way since then, and just uh, seems to be struggling along. Just tried to stay in the top ten because uh, Hins is catching him up. Thomas Hins doing an excellent job there in tenth place right now. Uh, could be on for another position uh, as it looks like further up Chris Shepard is actually under pressure from Tobias Olsen Tobias also goes up the inside into turn one all oh, there's banging oh, wheels dear. and Debris goes into Shepard as well coming out of two it looks like Olsen's actually going to get this one but Shepard's going to keep on him uh, I don't think this one's over just yet Shepard goes around the outside oh he cuts across him oh unbelievable stuff it's all getting a bit feisty here I think everyone's getting a bit hot under the colour color right now and Debris trying to go through there and he got through into P5 yeah real Argy Bargy came up between Olsen and Shepard these two are not happy with each other at the moment and Chris Shepard down into the sixth place. Not a happy jammy perhaps after that contact, but he'll be trying his hardest to catch up to Olsen and Debris. These three, all entire incredibly talented drivers, these three, Debris, Olsen and Shepard, but all of them just want to battle each other. They all want to fight with each other and they all want that fourth place. Only one of them can have it. Yeah, they're all battling away. And interestingly enough as well, whilst this battle uh, continues, Stefan Ruart is catching Hoekstra pretty quick thought right now and out of the top uh, six drivers at least uh, top seven actually Ruar's the only one that's on the medium tire right now so yeah, it's looking quite good for him he seems to certainly have the pace on this tire and the pass punched above his weight right now because I'd have thought that the soft would be better even at this point in the race well, Stefan Ruhl is a sensational driver, we know that uh, already, and from other exploits he's had in sim racing too. But uh, trying a bit of an alternate strategy here, perhaps, going for the mediums first, then gonna have a, he's going to have a quick, a short, a second stint. Maybe he can make that work to his advantage. It's what I would do personally, get the mediums out of the way, perhaps, if you know you're going to last on them, if you've done testing beforehand. Uh, but if you don't think they're going to, you know, last as long as you'd like, maybe go for the softs first, I don't know. But it's an interesting strategy he's taken here, and the fact he's catching up the Hoekstra is definitely good. It bodes well for the second part of the race, when it can carry less fuel and roll them on the softs in the second half, when other people will be on the medium, so you'll have more grip, and uh, probably a lighter car too. Yeah, certainly. Uh, the only other driver I've seen is Roy Schroten in the top 10 that's Ooh. also on the medium tyre so good effort by him also and it's gonna be interesting to see how those two fare in the second half of this race then as i think we've had a pit stop as well yeah. once stefano's come in and he he's hasn't switched. he's changed yes to the uh medium tyre so he's been on those softs for seven laps i don't know whether he's having tyre preservation problems or he's just trying to come in early and make them last trying to 
Go for an even more alt than a strategy, but Johan Lindbergh in too, and he's on the mediums, and Lindbergh in switching to the soft. Interesting stuff. Yeah, something's uh, definitely definitely going on here. Is he trying a two stop strategy? Maybe he's going to go for two sits. Oh, and we've had a couple of guys around. Uh, it looks like Aiden Paulson and someone else I saw as well behind him has gone have gone around at the clock chicane. So uh, I think that might have been uh, Thomas Hins actually. Ooh. They're both. Lost quite a few positions who were in Paulson. eighth and ninth at the time. Yeah, Paulson born himself. I saw Paulson go around. He just lost it on his own. And Hins, I don't know what happened to Thomas Hins. I'm going to go back and inspect it. Oh, yeah, Hins around the same corner as Paulson there. They both joined the synchronized spinning team. And, uh, well, they're going to be battling each other now. But it's going to be the uh, Scotsman versus the Aussie. Obviously, Paulson versus Hins for P12 when they catch each other. If they catch each other. It's not a given. That they will, but uh, speaking of people that are catching to that, Orson de Vries looks like it's starting to heat up. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? As uh, Roy Schroeder now has come into the pit, so he's one of our drivers that are on the medium. So, again, interesting to see that he's pitting already on these tyres. Maybe he doesn't like them and just wants to get off them as quickly as he can. So, he's switching over to the softs. Hins, Thomas Hins is also in. And he's going from the mediums to the softs as well, is he? Or is he going on to the mediums? It looks like he's going on to the mediums, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense for him to go on to the mediums. Does Haynes and, uh, well, he's going to try and take to the end of the race now. He's done, he's done, he's done eight or nine on the softs, so it's not unreasonable to suggest he might get more life out of the mediums. Might be able to do it, but there'll be touch and go, I suspect. I've not really got any first-hand experience with tyre life. This is unknown territory this whole season, because no, none of us have seen these tyres in action before. This is going to be very interesting to see, though I suspect you can probably get about 15 laps out of the... Uh, Mediums, anyways, uh, a CP10, DeVries Paulson looking to be going. So, Garrett DeVries, Aiden Paulson here. Gonna be uh, Holland versus uh, Scotland. Gonna be Holland versus the Mercer Performance Racing as Paulson gets a bit squinty, but so does DeVries. Yeah, good little battle here. DeVries, Garrett DeVries did very well after qualifying so low on the grid to find himself in the top 10. Paulson, of course, recovering after that spin on the previous lap is really harassing. Garrett de Vries right now all over the track as they go down towards Ascari then. Pulsar goes to the outside. Can he break later? It looks like he can, but can he get it turned in? Just about all, oh, but look at that. Paulson. De Vries just pushed him wide. Yeah, he just went off there and Garrett, well, he was, they were chasing each other going into that corner. It was always going to be an interesting one. And Garrett de Vries, yeah, he just, oh, yeah, he just came right wide. Paulson had nowhere to go, really, and yeah, he, he had the braking on Garrett, but then Garrett took the inside and then just ran wide into Paulson. I doubt Aiton will be happy about that at all. No, I don't think he will, will he? Uh, so it definitely starting to hot, hot up at, front, at the front as well. Lars Brugman has just had a very bad lap. He's uh, been about two seconds slower than he usually is, and that just means that Hoekstra and Ruov all caught up with him. They're all three of them are in one shot now, pretty much, and uh, that just means that we could be in for a battle, or can uh, Brugman kind of regroup and uh, get back into the times that he should be doing right now, or is his tyres starting to go off? This is really, really exciting stuff. I don't know which way this is going to go. Yeah. Drop yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be an absolutely brilliant race by the looks of it. And this is only, only about 10 laps in. This is lap 11 and we still don't know who's going to win it. No, we've got no idea, have we? And of course, uh, the majority of these, these drivers are still got to make the pit stops as well. So it's going to be interesting. How long can these soft tyres last for? How long will the drivers push them? Well, Brugman, he doesn't think he's got any more life in his tyres because he's coming in now from the lead of the race so he's surely going to switch onto the mediums here and it looks like Ruelts followed him in as well so that means Wupke Hoekstra takes the lead of the race now. Yep, Wupke takes the lead, Lars in and I do believe this is a tyre change and oh Stefan Ruelts getting there, uh, is Stefan Ruelts held behind him or is there not enough pit boxes? Is he getting held behind Brookman here or is he actually in a pit box of his own? I don't know but uh, yep, Ruelts oh. is uh, Ruelts yep, got held behind Brookman and they're different teams! It's absolute disaster. Unbelievable this is. And uh, that has truly ruined Ruolt's race here because he was right in the battle with Brugman, but now he's going to be so far behind him. Oh, and uh, oh, Shiranku is had to stop in a weird way because uh, one of the Enterprise guys is sticking out there. That is, uh, I believe, one of the, yeah, that's one of the retired Enterprise guys is sticking out. And is going to have a weird exit here. Let's see what happens. Is he going to have to go around him? Is he going to have to reverse? He's just oh, blasting out the way! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's unconventional, but it works! 
I have no idea why there's a car parked there or how he could possibly be parked there. But that was brilliant. Shraku just didn't, didn't care or did he just uh, completely ignored the situation. Just said, I'm going, I'm off. I don't care about you and your car sat there. And away he goes into 13th base. He's got uh, Wesley Stefano uh, right on his tail right now. But it looks like Shrek is just going to hold him off. And once he gets his tyres up to temperature, I'm sure I'll be able to pull away. So, interesting stuff. Is there. Oh, Josh Down now is going around again. Oh, uh, no. He's lost yeah. It. Down had has had a spin there. He's going to get back, though, and probably uh, become Josh up, uh, upwards, uh, possibly if he goes there. Uh, into a good position there, but yeah, shame he did spin. He's having a decent race in P15. Uh, Chris Kinsman have a good one in P10 as well. Hoekstra in though from the lead. He is, so let's see this time. Hoekstra gonna do the same as Brooklyn and uh, Ruart. It looks like he's gonna switch onto the mediums and look at that for positioning his car. He set it up perfectly for X in the pits. Tobias Olsen and Sven De Brees are in as well from second and third place, so they're both taking off the softs, going onto the mediums. Let's see where Hoekstra comes out though. It's going to be interesting stuff, but you can see Brookman coming down the field right now. Uh, down the pit straight, I should say, just uh, lapping one of the back markers. And they're going side by side, coming out to turn two. Look at that, Brookman retakes the lead there. Great move round the outside, and uh, Hoekstra didn't really have an answer there because he was uh, on cold tyres, uh, just coming out of the pit. So that means that... Oh, Wookie round! round. And what they're talking about, cool tyres. You don't get much colder than that. Vandenbrunk has had a go around as well, I believe. But yeah, Wookie just lost it there. And uh, yeah, Lars around the outside. Nothing he could do. Wookie there. Yeah, oh, he was hit by Vandenbrunk. That, that's gone widely. Marco just outshot himself and then just went into the rear right of Horstra. Tipped him around. And well, as a back marker, that's not the best thing he can do. Get involved in the lead battle. But yeah, Marco, yeah, he just, he just, look, he just overshot it. Couldn't go anywhere. Wookie was already turning in, and Marco, the Belgian, into the side of the Dutchman. So, a bit of a Benelux brawl going on there, perhaps, but not good for Marco or Wookie. No, it's, uh, uh well, we've seen everything in this race, aren't we? Oh, well, now he's just gone straight on. Van der Bronck's just gone straight on there, but he is struggling then at GP3 car. Yeah, he certainly is the lap down at the moment, and it looks like it's going from bad to worse for him. That was like a Montoya Verstappen situation there. Uh, really crazy stuff to see a back marker hit uh, a leading driver. So, uh, well, we've seen just about everything here today. Uh, but hopefully that's enough of the craziness. We just want some proper racing now as Chris Shepard continues to lead here. He's got uh, about a 4.5 second lead, of course, but he hasn't pitted. Uh, and it's actually down to three seconds now. That's how quick Lars Brugman is compared to Shepard on his older tyres now. He's just continuing on with these soft tyres, keeping them going just about. Uh, pace has started to drop off a little bit in the last couple of laps for Shepard. And uh, I'm sure he'll be looking to switch over the mediums very soon. Yeah, going to be interesting to see. Look at this, how funny it close is. So close to the freeze here. Yeah, both on the medium tyres. Both juggling it out for P5 and Rue up behind as well. This is a, such a close battle. This is what you get in WCS. These guys do not lay about. There's a freeze on the outside here trying to go on Fournier. Yeah, he tries to go around the outside. He's going to have the inside for the next corner. Fournier is going to try to stick it around the outside now. And here oh, comes Rue Stefan! Beautiful stuff. Nearly sneaked past the freeze as well there. But Rue manages to opportunistically take that position from Fournier when Fournier was uh, pulling out to dry a little bit on the outside and that means that uh, Ruart's up here to sick now recovering of course after having to sit behind another competitor in the pits and oh, oh look at Jeffrey that. that's not how you take that turn it looks like Ruart's just uh, popped back in there in the breaker zone just uh, moved back over to the left hand side of the track and maybe Fournier wasn't expecting it oh yeah well, he just came over it. Yeah, he moved under brake, and there he went out for De Vries. He tried to go for it. The move wasn't there, so then he just comes back on the inside, and Fournier has to dodge. That's well, it's not the best judge move from Rob moving under braking. It, it is unpredictable, but uh, Jeffrey's lost position because of that. He won't be a happy Frenchman. He certainly won't be. As Chris Shepard now enters the pit, so he uh, relinquishes his lead, and he'll switch over to the medium tires uh, for the rest of the race. Then. Yeah, uh, onto the mediums. Yep, yeah, Oxcray Shepard onto the mediums edge. You see the tyre ball change from yellow to white. And you can see that he's all right for the next part of the race. He leaves the pits, 10 laps to go. And Shepard is going to lose track position, of course. But look at this, it's uh, Bruwald on the back of Javrice at the moment. Still challenging Fournier, going to try and catch up position after that little incident before. But uh, this battle between these two is not done. 
Uh, it certainly isn't, is it? Uh, Fournier has lost a good oh. 15 seconds, but Bruart is up the inside of Debris. Goaded to turn two, Debris. This time around, it's the same as last time. He has the inside for the next turn, but Ralph's going to try and hold it around the outside. Look at the acceleration he gets out of the corner, and he takes that position back. Ruart is really on a charge now. 15 seconds behind the leader, Brugman. That's how much time he lost in the pits, pretty much. Uh, but it certainly means that he's at least given himself a chance of getting on the podium here today, because he's seven seconds behind Spike Salsa in third. Uh, that's exactly who his next target is. I can't keep my eyes on it. Oh, well, Chris Kinsman was in the battle with Roy Schrum, but he's gone wide. Schrum promoted to seventh as a result. There. I was going to say, I can't keep my eyes on this battle. This is close, but Kinsman's been forced into a mistake there, makes a mistake, then loses track position, and that is not good for CK at all. But still, Shiran Q and Quint, an equally close battle for P10 at the moment, Sam. Yep, it is. It's uh, a good little battle here. Shiran Q seems to continually drop down the field every time we go back to him but uh, this time around he's looking to progress a little bit because he's got Mike Quint right ahead of him as uh, so they head through turn nine it's a uh, real fast on there uh, let's have a look at their tires and Quint's on the medium so is Shranku so they're all even on tires it's just down to the pace of each of the drivers and it looks like Shranku's just dropped a little bit there then hasn't he uh, Quint's got a bit of a breathing space yeah, he has got breathing space now as Mike Quint. Just a bit of room from Shiranku, though he could snatch it away in a millisecond if he wanted to because Shiranku is looking to be very quick here, of course. Kinsman in the pits uh, on the soft. I'm amazed he's made them last 15 laps, to be honest. If this is his only pit stop as he comes in now, switches over. And uh, yeah, I do believe, with the exception of lap six, this is his only pit stop unless he made a mistake. So, going for a two stop perhaps or a one stop, but really doing well on the tyres. Yeah, I have a feeling that that probably was a mistake in lap 6. I don't remember seeing anyone pit around that time. So, uh, very long first stint for Kingsman. And he's going to come back out in 14th, is he? It's going to be close because Joe Watts is uh, charging down into turn 1. And uh, charges a little bit too far because he goes onto the grass, loses all momentum. And he's going to get swallowed up here because here comes Johan Lindbergh, Aidan Paulson, and Jacob Pegg as well, all Ooh, battling their way. This is and close. Yeah, Paulson, he seems to be a bit mistake prone and he's to be paid the price for that. He's getting swamped by cars now down in 17th place. Then back through, Watts through, Kinsman through, Hins out of the race. I've just noticed we do lose a Thomas Hins. I think he's been out for a while, actually. Uh, Niels Brugman obviously out as well. No, Hins just spun and retired. That's what happened, DA. Yeah, just spun it and then called it a day. Damn that because he was having a decent race. Uh, Brugman obviously out as well. But uh, Niels, that is, Lars leading the race. But yeah, shame we've lost a couple more drivers. Yep, a uh, couple more gone. Uh, that means we're down to uh, about 26 drivers now, so it's still a fairly good looking field right now. And uh, hopefully they'll all come back for race two, just to give you an idea of what's going back on up front. It's uh, nothing much has changed. Last Brooklyn leads by three seconds over Wookiee Hoekstra. Tobias Olsen is over five seconds back. We've uh, spent a race now back up into fourth place, interestingly enough. So, Ruart's dropped, uh, dropped the position after taking it from De Vries. He's dropped back down into fifth. Yeah, not good for Ruart, but good for De Vries. Getting himself off a good start here and a uh, good start for positive sim racing as well. Obviously, coming into WCS from a big eye racing background. You know, very, very big team positive. So great that Sven and uh, as well as that, his teammates are both getting the chance here, Lars and Sven. Drive, it is a 1 4 for positive, really establishing himself as early title favourites. Yeah, it looks like, uh, well, that's what happens when you get a couple of big names in there, of course. But uh, the likes of Hoekstra and Olsen and Ruout, they're all there or thereabouts as well, and they're certainly going to challenge. But uh, you're going to need two big, uh, two consistent scoring drivers, I feel, to take the Constructors' Championship this year. That's uh, really what we're seeing from positive sim racing right now in terms of uh, where their two drivers are in the field. Other teams are having a, a few problems here or there with uh, one of the two drivers. So uh, it's an interesting one so far. And uh, we'll have to see, is Debris going to hold on to this fourth place? Is Bruart going to catch back up? He's on the uh, soft compound tyre, interestingly enough. The only driver in the top six I've noticed that's on that soft compound right now, of course, because he started on the mediums, as did, as did uh, Roy Schroten, who's in seventh place. Yeah, Schroten seventh at the moment, and uh, on the softs, Ruol also on the softs, both of them probably having started on the medium tyres. They will have a piece advantage on that rubber until it starts to lose 
traction and grip when it wears down. So, you know, going to be interesting to see how this goes for the two of them on these uh, softer tyres end of the race rather than the start. Of course, the second race is the sprint race. I assume they'll all be on the uh, softs for that. He's going to give it the full beans for the full duration of the race. And, uh, well, they'll be using this maybe as a test bed for how long the tyres will last in the sprint. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of these drivers are starting to get an idea, a picture now of what they can do on these tyres. And I think, uh, well, that's going to be a deciding factor, definitely, in terms of what we're going to see in the next race. And that's going to make it interesting as well. Uh, as all the strategy starts to play out, it, it seems to have calmed down here a little bit, Josh, uh, hasn't it? It's uh, just uh, calmed down at the front. It looks like the first few cars have just spread out spread out a little bit. It, I think uh, Ruart de Vries is probably the closest battle near the front we've got right now. And Fournier is actually going to round here. As oh, I say, no. Fournier is going to round in eighth, and uh, he's dropped a position to Sharanku, who's recovering after dropping further down the field himself. So Fournier gets back going, and he's actually got Stefano. Where's his Stefano on his tail now uh, for ninth place? Yeah, going to be interesting to see how uh, Stefano races him now. Uh, Fournier just not really been his race, to be honest. He started great, got into the lead, and then it all went disastrously wrong for the Frenchman. I'm sure there'll be a couple of people having a couple of uh, words uh, after this race, but been a good race overall definitely we've seen a lot of action and uh well some of it hasn't been the best but some of it has been fantastic yeah it's always going to happen with a big field of cars isn't it and uh, a track like melbourne is certainly unique a very very difficult track to race on and uh, really one of those tracks that you can't uh, make much of an error because there is very little margin for error around melbourne uh, here as we've seen that quite a bit in the first part of this race, but uh, we're on to lap 19 now. Uh, the lead between the top two is still about the same, about uh, three seconds as uh, further back. I'm still looking for a, a super close battle. Uh, I think you have to look back all the way to 14th with Johan Lindbergh. He's got Aidan Paulson right behind him, uh, 14th and 15th place. Yeah, 14th and 15th at the moment, obviously, Paulson and Lindbergh looking to be a decent battle as well. Johan Lindbergh, very capable driver, again, for Ice Cold, just doesn't seem to be in his race today. But maybe in the sprint race, he'll come good. I don't know, we, haven't, we don't know how many drivers are going to cope in the sprint race. This is the first one time we've had one uh, this season in the GP3. He's obviously had it in Formula 3 last year, but this year, GP3, going to be interesting to see how the cars deal with that. And uh, as well as that, you know how Lindbergh and the likes deal with it. Sometimes some drivers are better in a shorter race, others... Struggle in a longer race, but also my better in a longer race. We lose a Niels Voss. In the meantime, it was gone out from 26th for Intrepid Autosport. That is a shame for Niels. But yeah, some drivers are just better in longer races. Yeah, they are. I think it's definitely all about consistency. And for most of these drivers, it's the height of the summer now as well. So uh, it's going to be perhaps a little bit more difficult with the uh, rising temperatures that we've got at the moment for. Uh, a lot of people, so fatigue comes into play, concentration as well. It can all get very, very difficult, and uh, for some, more than others, they are a bit more used to it, and uh, that's really, really shine. But of course, the second race uh, will all be to play for as well, so uh, definitely don't go away from that one because it's all going to get reset once again uh, for that second race. Absolutely, all still to play for, you know, that is. You know, I, there's still so much left in this race. There's still six laps. Anything can happen in six laps. It certainly can do. Uh, it's uh, looking like we're going to have a, maybe a change of position here for 14th because Aiden Pulse has gone around the outside of Lindbergh into turn one. And uh, well, oh, he has that's... so much straight line advantage there that he got past him, but even for the braking zone. Yeah, Paulson just had it under the straight line there, brilliantly done from him to get through. Hopefully he'll be able to hold it because he'll like a 14th place. Lenberg though is not exactly what you call an easy customer. He likes gaining positions. He will challenge Paulson for that. He will keep the pressure well and truly on him there. And it's going to be an interesting battle between the two of them. Yep, uh, we've had another retirement then. Mike Quint has retired, so uh, that means we've only got 24 runners left in the race now. It looks as... Uh, so over the last couple of laps, we've just had a, quite a few more retirees, so maybe a few drivers just uh, struggling. It's, oh, Sharanku, he's gone off as well uh, at the fast chicane, and he's lost his rear wing, and he goes round again on the straight. Uh, oh, dear, no Sharanku. 
That's not good. He was hit as well for Landers on the mode. Oh, he just clipped the curb there. Lost it. And that is so easy to do. You can upset these cars. Get the curb to out then. Round and round. Doesn't slow him down. Rear wing just detaches. He'll have to struggle it back to the pits now. Because with no rear wing, these cars are going to be touchy. Yeah, he's, look at him. He's struggling. He's, oh, he can't keep in a straight line at all. And he's gone off again. And, uh, well, let's see if he's going to be a soldier and carry on. He certainly is. He's going to keep pushing here. Uh, as he drops further down, down in 16th, third, well, he's going to lose a lap at least because of this rear wing change as well. So, a disappointment for him, our pole sitter. It seems to have just gone bad to worse this race, and, uh, well, he continues. Fair play to him. Easily done, easily done. It really is, and, uh, well, I'm going to be interested and see how it goes from here. But, uh, yeah. Kinsman, you know, as well in 12. Paulson, you know, these guys further down the order could probably take advantage of this. Going to start some pulse and daylight between Shivanka, who's now probably going to barge uh, the Enterprise out of the way again. Once that rear wing is uh, gone and, uh, well, put back on rather, not gone, uh, replaced onto the car. And, yep, he's going to get back back on. And I assume he'll just barge the Enterprise out of the way again like he did last time because he's so close. Barely makes no difference. Yep, no, he doesn't actually touch him this time. Yeah, he's been pushed around a little bit more, hasn't it? So, uh... Was it quite as obstructive, but uh, still there none the least. Don't quite know what has been going on with that car, but uh, it certainly created a little bit more of interest. This has been a truly uh, exciting race, and uh, the battle still continue on. Now Paulson has caught up to Chris Kinsman here for 12th position, so Paulson's on a, a late race charge right now and just picked up a few more positions. Yeah, you know, really is just on a charge now, trying to get positions back. He's going for Kinsman now. This should be a good recovery from Paulson if he gets it. Because, you know, he has had problems out the race, been a bit spin prone. And, uh, yeah, to get back to 12th would be great for the Scotsman. It really would. Would represent, you know, him getting back into it and his ability to adapt to anything that comes his way. And it would be great to see him there. Forney and Stefano, though, interesting for it. Yes. Of course, Fournier, another guy who uh, has fallen from grace a little bit in this race. He was uh, leading the first part of the race. And uh, after that uh, clash with uh, Lars Brugman, as Brugman took the lead of the race, it just seems to have gone uh, down a little bit for Fournier. And right now, he's just holding on from Stefano. The car is looking very twitchy. And right now, Pat's not doing exactly what he wants it to do and maybe not enjoying these uh, medium tyres right now either. Uh, as Pulsar goes uh, up the inside of Limburg, I think Limburg has actually tried to overtake Paulson there. Uh, so, nearly a change of position, but not quite. Yeah, not quite done yet, and uh, you'll have to try a bit harder to get through on uh, Kinsman here. Limburg, or oh, going for Paulson as well. Really, no one following now. This is a great round between them. Borne and Stefano close as well. This, this is all kicking off with a couple of laps to go, Sam. It's brilliant. Yeah, all of a sudden. We had a couple of calm laps and now it's all come back to life again and uh, these guys are battling it out for the points. It's all important stuff, even at this early stage, you just want to get some points on the board early on and uh, the first round is always a good place to start. Uh, a lot of them are really pushing hard here. Paulson is pushing so hard onto the grass and I think he's actually going to lose a position here to Lindbergh. Lindbergh gets around the outside of him and that's thanks to the momentum. The Paulson loss as he uh, went wide there. Uh, so we've got a car round as well. I didn't quite catch who that was. I think it's a back marker. Yeah, going to be interesting to see how this uh, goes for sure. And, uh, well, back markers, you know, at this stage of the race, they just need to watch themselves, try and hold the line, stay stable, you know, not do anything unpredictable, let the leaders go by. That's kind of what you'll be hoping for. Just, you know, stick to a certain line and, you know, it should be easy. Yep, it should be. As, uh, just watching Debris here, moving around a little bit on the straights. Uh, not quite sure what he's looking at. So he was uh, just uh, weaving from uh, left to right there. I don't think he needs to be warming up his tyres right now. I'm sure they're plenty hot at the moment. So whether he's just uh, clipped the wall or something, uh, hopefully no great, uh, late race dramas for him. Uh, as it seems to be okay now, but still has uh, Ruart on his tail. But uh, Ruart hasn't been able to mount a challenge after losing that position to Debris about uh, five, six lap laps ago. Yeah, not really being able to mount as much of a challenge as he'd like, and that is going to annoy him because he wanted to be, he wanted to be right up there battling it out, and it's just not going to occur, unfortunately. No, it's certainly not. Terence Scratch, though, he's got Matt Richards all over the back of him. 
both these cars currently on Mark's no, uh, no paint or stickers on them, but I'm sure we'll have uh, all the cars sorted out for the next round. Gretsch is going to have to go defensive because Riches is lucky to his outside towards Scari. Riches is going to go for the cutback here and look at that, just struggling to apply the power there. Just the car wants to spin left and then right and Richards was manhandling the car. Get it all back into position and again trying every other line that he could think of against Gretsch and gets a good slingshot out the final corner and down towards turn one across the start finish line. He's onto the gearbox to Gretsch and Gretsch is going to go stay on the right side of the track. Mitch is going to try around the outside. Not quite close enough there. Uh, just has to hold on in 11th place right now. Again onto the back foot but it doesn't seem to quite have the final top speed to get a little bit further alongside and the approach to the corner. Rich is going to try around the outside. Oh there's contact. Oh contact the indeed. That's not what we like to see unfortunately. Just uh, came together there. Yeah, but uh, Rich has been fair though, he waited uh let Gretsch back through, so good uh, sportsmanship right there by Richards. Yeah, definitely good to see that. So, oh. Yeah, so, sorry Josh, we're on to the final lap of the race already, I can't believe it, it's gone that quickly, it's been uh, that good. Lars Brookman then on to his final lap and he's got a 4 point five second lead over Whoopke Hoekstra right now so uh, looking very comfortable for Brookman he just has to keep it calm bring it home and he'll have the job done and that'll be a great start for himself and positive sim racing in their debut race in WCS. Uh, can't get a better debut than a win can you? No certainly can't. The race is currently in fourth place for positive as well and it looks like Ross trying to mount a late race charge here he's all over the back of the race uh, looking every which way, and uh, whether he'll get a last lap pass, maybe into a Scari or into the final corner. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to see what's uh, going to happen here between these two. Ruolt and Debris giving each other serious chase on the final lap. Neither wants to cede fourth place. Ruolt doesn't want to give up the charge. Debris doesn't want to give up the place. Both are going to come into the left right very quickly here. Going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. I think Debris is going to hold it for a while longer, but Brookman coming around the final couple of corners. Yep, here comes Lars Brookman then. He uh, didn't start on pole, he had to fight his way up, but he certainly made a couple of passes along the way. But Lars Brookman once again showing what he could do. He takes the first win of the season here in the GP3 WCS League. What a way for him to start off his season. What a way for Positive to make their scene on this league as well, picking up the win. Wopke Hoekstra, our reigning champion, comes home in second place. A great result for him. A solid, solid race by Hoekstra. Tobias Olsen had a good battle through the field. Really came up from uh, uh, quite a few positions down to take third place. And De Vries did manage to hold on to fourth place in the end from Stefan Ruolt, who will be ruining that uh, issue in the pits where he had to wait behind Brugman. So bizarre to see that, but that certainly cost him a bit of time. And potentially cost him uh, second place even a win who knows what would have happened Chris Shepard in sixth place Roy Schroten then comes home in seventh place and Jeffrey Fournier another guy who was leading the race today uh, has to settle for eighth place at the end uh, had a few troubles along the way but uh, got there eventually Wesley Stabano in ninth Chris Kinsman in tenth place who's just about going to hold on from Matt Richards it looks like it's close between the two of them uh, but it looks like Kinsman's just about going to do the job, so he actually picked up a, a couple of places on the last lap, so good effort by Kinsman there to sneak his way into the top 10 right at the bitter end. A great result for him, Richards in 11th, then Lindbergh in 12th. Aidan Paulson had a very adventurous race for performance racing. He picks up 13th with Jacob Pegg in 14th place, and Garrett De Vries coming around the field. The final guy on the lead lap then, is Garrett De Vries. He will take this 15th place because no one else is around him. Terence Gretsch retired then on the final lap of the race. I think he was battling with Richards, wasn't he? Uh, so I don't know what happened with him. That'll be an interesting one to see. Uh, so your lapped cars were Joe Watts, Josh Downard, Sergio Asvedo, Casper Onwin, Marco van der Broek, uh, Richard Brooks. Daniel Sharanku actually retired with a few laps to go as well. And uh, the rest of the field kind of played their part there. 
as we came to the end so josh an exciting first race there very interesting stuff indeed and uh well we can only hope to see what's going to happen in race two yeah it's going to be interesting to see how this goes and uh well I'm interested to see how this, you know, is going to progress for race two. Obviously, reverse grade, sprint race. What's not to like? Yep. It's uh, the usual stuff. And uh, one race is that good. It's always nice to come along and have a second one straight after. And that's exactly what we've got in store. So, uh, certainly going to be an interesting one. Before then, though, we'll just have a little bit of a break for a warm-up session. Or a cool down session, depending on how you might be feeling right now. Uh, I know for me, it certainly is a bit of a cool down session because that was super exciting stuff right there and, and uh, some great battles. And uh, well, first impressions then, Josh, what did you make of uh, the cars then? This change from uh, the Formula Freeze to the GP Freeze. Yeah, it's going to be, it's been a great switch so far. I've loved it. Seeing these brand new cars rolling around the track. I've loved it. It's been great to see, you know, I, I can't wait for race two. Yeah. Well, we hopefully won't have to wait too long. See how uh, long the break is going to be in between. I know it changed a little bit during the season last year. I think we uh, went down from 10 minutes to five minutes, but maybe we'll be back to 10 minutes here. We'll have to find out and uh, of course in race two there's going to be uh, a few changes to the grid as well isn't it is it the uh, what is it the top 10 that switches yeah it's um i think i believe it's between the top 10 and top 15 but there's going to be a random random uh, draw here and more like a 10 minute break before the second race is going to be random number generated and that driver between the range will get themselves the reverse grade pole all right we'll have to watch out for that one then uh, we'll keep you posted as soon as we hear anything about it. But uh, right now, it looks like uh, everyone's just uh, taking a little bit of a breather. Uh, certainly, I will uh, be taking a breather as well because that was truly exciting stuff. Uh, good to see that Daniel Brewer is back out on track. Of course, a real disaster for him and for Enterprise GP on their debut race in uh, WCS after such promising qualifying it's just a real shame to see that what was possibly two disconnects two uh, PC issues uh, software issues who knows uh, after, a, after a session like that for a team uh, how do you pick yourself back up Josh? How do you just you got to try and pick yourself back up how do you do that though is just maybe think well okay first race wasn't mine i'm gonna charge even harder in the second it's harder when it's not a longer race because there's more things can go on for the drivers in a longer race and uh well in a shorter one it's not as easy so you really just gotta have it's got you gotta be strong in mind if it's a shorter race but it can be done it can be done yeah it certainly can be of course uh those drivers who did retire at the, at some point during race one they'll have to start really far back deep in the field for race two due to the way the uh, grid is selected depending on results in uh, race one so for all of them it's going to be a bit of a battle certainly but uh, we saw some drivers cutting their way through the field carving their way through the field uh, i think one of them was tobias olsen he uh, did an excellent job of course because he finished third in the first race and he actually qualified all the way down in 14th so that was 11th play 11 places that he picked up there and uh, that showed that either he didn't quite get it all right in qualifying or he just suddenly found something for the race because uh, that was an impressive performance yeah it was a really good performance from him he was hoping to replicate that in the second race but uh you know shorter race less room for error gonna be more difficult for everyone not just uh, him gonna be everyone's gonna be on edge this race i think it's gonna really gonna be an inter interesting one I think so. So, just a few <laughs> discussions in the Going chat on. about the reverse grid. That's exactly what we're still waiting for. Uh, it seems to be that we haven't gone into the warm up session. We seem to be going back to uh, back to practice. I think they're having just a few issues sorting out the grip or whatever, uh, loading the right settings at least for race two. Yeah, going to be interesting. Uh, you know, it, 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 these things happen, and uh, well, there's discussions going on. But uh, yeah, top ten reverse grids, or within the first ten, someone will get it. I assume from six to ten, and uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see how this goes. Who gets it? Yeah, 
Uh, I think that won't happen. It, we've now switched over to the warm up, so fingers crossed they've uh, managed to sort out whatever minor little issue it was. I don't think it was anything too uh, important at the end of the day. I don't think that was an issue. Whatever the case is, though, every time we do switch to uh, whatever session it may be, Daniel Brewer is straight out to the end of the pit lane, straight to the end of the pits. Uh, he really wants to just get going here. It looks like uh, he wants to make up for. Uh, the issues in race one and uh, perhaps try a few things as well so he, he's just getting out there and uh, getting to grips of things good to see him looking keen and ready to go not hanging about is he no he certainly isn't everyone else though, i think they're having a bit of a breather i don't know about you josh but uh because some of these drivers might be a little bit tied up at the first race i'm feeling it a little bit in here i've already got through a whole glass of water uh, such is oh, the temperature in this room right now, and um, I've got I've got a massive fan outside. Mine blowing air in, so I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, I've I've not taken precautionary measures. Got you no don't have that luxury. I don't know. It's uh, still in the dark ages here. We don't have all the modern technology of a fan blowing air around the room. Yeah, just just not that advanced, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get on my level. <laughs> Certainly not. I wish. I'm. I'm. I'm jealous of you, Josh. Right now, I really am. It wouldn't be. <laughs> hey, hey, enough about me, though. Enough about me. Sam Jones is the one you want to be talking about, man. <laughs> oh. Whoa, well, no. Something. So I've had a few issues here, so um, I don't know if. I oh, know. I just uh, server restarted. I believe. All right. I hope everyone's okay in the cast. I've. Uh, I've lost everything. Uh, my yeah, it's all right. Everything. Oh, he's lost everything, ladies and gentlemen. It's all gone terribly wrong. Where did it go so wrong for Sam Jones? Oh, well, I think it started from not having a fan, to be honest with you. Yeah, that, that's where it that's where it started. And, uh, no. no, just a quick server restart. We should be back in action soon. Yep. It should be. I've been told that my game has been updated, so that's interesting. I hope, uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope they haven't suddenly oh. brought out an update. Oh, no, I uh, uh, believe I've just had my effort to do shit as well, so circumstances have changed. Ah. Uh, well, who told the awesome. developers here? You know, this is this is the WCS night. This is important stuff, this is. You know no what it is? They, they, come to our, they come to our league. They put these updates on in our races. <laughs> Honestly, what what is what is this going on? <laughs> I, I thought the developers were better than this. We're so important. <laughs> we are, aren't we? We're... We're the main fit. We're the yeah, main league. This is where it's at, man. Don't update the game during our races. No, absolutely not. Ah, dear, dear. Well, they could be worse. It could, could be, be significantly worse. It could be much worse than this, but uh, I'm sure. Don't worry, guys at home. I'm sure we're going to have a race here. Oh, we'll have look. a race. We'll have a race if um if it's the end of the league. Well, maybe if this is the last race, we'll have a race. That's the thing. We're determined to get it going. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna do this. We're not gonna, we're not gonna miss out after a race like that. Race one. That was spectacular stuff. Uh, that was thoroughly exciting. So we can't miss out on uh, race two. Oh, I want to know what happens next. I want to see these tires in action. Who's gonna pick what on the tires? And uh, who's gonna really go for it in race two? How's the reverse grid gonna affect everything? There's so many questions here. Uh, we can't, uh, we can't. Not answer the questions. It's so critical. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to uh, see, definitely. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be interested to um, see this going. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> you get a musical interlude too. This is what this is what happens when you use WCS broadcast. You get musical interludes. I'm I'm truly lost for words right now, Josh. It wouldn't truly. be. I'm just actually getting myself on Britain's Got Talent. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd get knocked out in it I'd, straight away, but worth a go, right? I'd actually watch it for the first time ever. I'd actually put it on just to see you, Josh. Oh no, I can't, I can't. I can't go on really. But that that is nice to know. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> well, I think I might be. Uh, I think I've found the server again. So Good. fingers crossed. Positive signs. Everything's gonna be okay. I hope. Every little thing's gonna be all right, as they say somewhere in the world. Can't remember exactly where, but I'm sure they say that at some place in the world. It seems like a common enough saying. 
Yeah. So just looking at it then, um, after that first race, it was interesting stuff with the strategy. It appears that the uh, soft tyres certainly start to drop off before the half race distance. Uh, that's why a lot of people, a lot of the drivers were pitting uh, a few laps shy of uh, halfway. So that was interesting. I, I'm, I'm still not sure about whether it's good to go out on the uh, hard tyres first or on the soft tyres for race one. Um, I'm sure the, the drivers know more than me. I don't know if you picked up anything there, Josh, about what the general consensus was with the tyre strategy. Yeah, it's going to be interesting if the tyres aren't lasting as long as people thought. They might choose the harder compound for the full race and be able to push more, or they might uh, try and have to do some tyre saving on the uh, on the harder on the softer compound towards the end of the race. I don't know. Definitely different ways people could go about this. I'm intrigued to see how they do go about this. And it's going to be a very interesting um, race too. That much is for certain. Yeah, we're uh, hopefully you can see some pictures. I believe you probably can of uh, what's going out on track now. Everything's, everyone's just had to pop back into the server. We've already got 28 cars back in, uh, so we're only missing potentially four. Depends if everyone actually comes back after that race one. Uh, hopefully they will do. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't give it a second go. Uh, uh, even if they did have uh, a race one that didn't quite go to plan. So uh, we're just, I think, going to hold on for a couple more guys. It looks like Roy Schroten has just popped back in. So make that 29 drivers now. Uh, at least ready to race anyway. So uh, fingers crossed we'll get one or two more, maybe three more. And then we'll be good to go for race two. Yep, going to be interesting to see how it goes. Race two indeed. Let's uh, let's have a get it when we're ready. Come on, race two. Let's, 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 let's do a race two. A second race is nice. It will be, it will be brilliant stuff. Wesley Stefano joins. That's 30 now. We're getting them all in. That's excellent stuff. Great to see. And uh, quite a few drivers have popped back out onto the track as well now. Uh, it appears that some of them want to get back going again perhaps they're just trying a few things out having a look to see what uh, kind of tires people are on it looks like uh, it looks like about I'd say about a 50 50 split at the moment between the soft and the uh, medium tires from the drives that I can see on track so I think we're gonna have quite different strategies in uh, this race too and it might bite some people and uh, maybe we'll see a few other guys doing uh, better than we thought they might do. This is really one to uh, gain a bit of an opportunity right now. It's so, it's almost like a like a wet, dry race. No one's quite sure what's going right now, and uh, this is really exciting. Oh, dear me, my Alpha Two's crashed. That's wonderful. Oh, that's a disaster, Josh. We've got to get you back in. Uh, if I can't hold in now after that brilliant race, I'm going to be absolutely heartbroken. Can't miss out on all the action. Can't miss out on double exhaust. That's impossible. <laughs> we need the guy to uh, spice up the commentary box. Oh, you, spice! I bring the spice. I, I, I bring the spice in droves. <laughs> you certainly do. I won't disagree about that one at all. Wouldn't be the same without you, Sam Jones. You are. You really, really are. Honestly, the the sort of person who would bring me right back to reality. With that, if it was just me, I'd be left to my own devices. I dread to think what would happen. So it's great that we have someone grounded and sensible like you to keep me in check. Thanks for that. I'll uh, take that one as a compliment. That's a bit of a nice little bromance we've got oh, going on now. You're supposed to take it as a compliment, man. What do you think I'm going to do? Insult you on a broadcast? I'm not that bad. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we just have a punch up afterwards, don't we? Yeah, outside. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> Well, say let me just get in the car. I'll be about four hours. Ah, okay, yeah, I'll be outside, guys. We'll have a nice cup of tea and then fist fight. <laughs> oh, I think I'll be worn out by then. Ah, uh, who wouldn't? Mad. Who wouldn't? Oh, oh! Just seen Daniel Brewer go around a, a bit, bit of a big crash for him there. Uh, certainly pushing the car to its limit. Currently second on the time sheets as well. Niels Brookman fastest at the moment but I really don't think it really means too much right now everyone's just uh, probably making sure everything's all right after we've had everything reset just now we've 
still got 30 drivers, so we are missing two. Don't ask me which two are missing, because uh, that's a lot of drivers to go through to try and work yeah. it out. Yeah, there are 30 drivers here, though. Out of 32 is good. We are in warm-up, and we will be getting the race underway very soon, I suspect. 12 laps and a formation lap, of course, for race two. So I imagine probably going to be a half-hour race, or 20 minutes, there or thereabouts. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, obviously, big field, short race. It's going to be interesting, as we know the race one was interesting. Let's see if race two follows it up. Yeah, we're not going to have much time to mess around, are we? We're only 12 laps in this race. It's going to go thick and fast. And, uh, well, I think that just puts the, a bit more pressure on the drivers. They can't. They can't just sit there and wait. They're going to have to go for the overtakes. And uh, I think we could see a few tears in uh, race two. Uh, maybe a few hot heads as well. Um, but uh, it's definitely going to promote even more overtaking. We had a good good amount of overtaking in race one, I felt. Uh, certainly the battles were very tough. And it was uh, pretty much the case in these cars. that uh, Momentum is key. As soon as you drop a little bit of momentum, it's so easy to lose one, two, three, four, uh, even five positions uh, just from the smallest of mistakes. So uh, everyone's really got to be on that A game. Yeah, got to be on it 100% of the time. Can't let up at all. And, uh, well, historically, Race 2 has followed Race 1 up and in terms of her good. But, yeah, let's, you know, let's just let's hope it does because it was a great first race. So, Race 2 really should be up there as well. Yeah, it should be. I think we're going to count on the clock here from the way we're going. We've got uh, just under four minutes left on the clock before warm-up. So, uh it looks like if you want to, you've just got a bit of time to go to the toilet, go for a drink, get, get some popcorn. Yeah, get some popcorn. You definitely get the popcorn for this race. Because I think it's gonna be fireworks. I really I really do think, Josh, that uh, I think after that race one, I think a lot of guys have got a point to prove right here. It's the start of the season as well. Um and I think uh, everyone's kinda of gonna go for it. So Yeah. Race 2 is always, you know, the sort of race where people, if they haven't really got it fully on it in race 1, they're going to like, right, okay, full on, racing, you know, this is racing mode, and this is usually race 2 where we see even better overtakes. Yeah, absolutely, I think, um, I think as well, everyone's probably feeling a bit more confident with these, so a few drivers are probably a bit, uh, a bit shy, just getting used to it in that race 1, but... Uh, now they're really going to be going for it. In terms of the grid then, I'm I'm assuming then if it is the top 10 that get reversed, as uh, I'm sure it is uh, the case, that means Chris Kinsman is going to be in pole. And of course, he was in 12th heading into the final lap. So whatever happened on that final lap, it certainly benefited him in a huge, huge way to be able to pick up that pole position that uh, potentially has transformed his whole uh, race for the second race of the evening. It was uh, looking like he was going to have to squabble around in the midfield into turn one, but now he has the chance to potentially lead the field into turn one, uh, which is a whole different uh, ball game for him. It's going to be very different, very different strategy, and uh, we'll see how he gets on. I think alongside him then will be Wesley Stefano, with uh, Fournier behind, Roy Schroten after that, uh, Chris Shepard in fifth, with uh, Stefan Rolt in sixth, De Vries in 7th, uh, Tobias Olsen in 8th, and uh, Hoekstra and Brugman will make up the top 10, of course. So, for Brugman, it's not too many cars to get past, it's 9 other cars ahead of him, but with only 12 laps to, to do that in, Josh, it's going to be a difficult one if we're going to see a repeat race winner here. It's not going to be easy, that much is for certain. It's going to be quite difficult uh, to get through in less times, and, uh, well... We'll have to see exactly how this scores for everybody, but, you know, I am confident that it will be a good race. Yeah, I think it will be. We just, uh, we just lost Frenick Hoekstra for a second. Oh, yeah, we got a uh, ring overboard. <laughs> yes, absolutely. He's, uh, he's walked the plank, so to speak, uh, but hopefully he'll get back Not in. He's on the court, of course. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully he'll get back in then. We'll have to see if he does. Uh, just to point out as well, Eric Stamford is in for the second race. Of course, he, he missed the first race. He should have been the 32nd driver in the first race, but uh, he disappeared on the formation lap, I think it was, or as they were going to the grid. So, 
fingers crossed that doesn't happen this time, and he'll actually be able to do a, go out there and do a bit of racing for us. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to see him and get out on the racing front because, you know, that would be great. But uh, it wasn't good, you know, to see him not be there in race one, Stanford, and hopefully he can take part in race two. Yeah. So uh, while all this is going on, uh, we've about 10 seconds left, just to point out that this isn't the only league that we've got in um, WCS. And once again, we've also got a bit of touring car action as well, and the Renault Megans, they'll be coming up soon. I believe that's Monday, isn't it, Josh? Uh, it's going to be uh, a Wednesday and then a Monday for the two races uh, each time. And then we'll have a about a 10-day break and then we'll repeat the cycle again. Yeah, of course, uh, we have Megans and we have GP3. Uh, two series running here at uh, WCS. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Megans go for sure because very interesting cars. And uh, I'm looking forward to them because I'll be on the commentary for it. But uh, yeah, I'm all, I'm, I like the GP3 just as much, I think, so far. Yeah. Well, you always come into the elements, don't you, when it gets down to the touring car action, Josh? And, uh, What's not like about it? <laughs> I know, it's uh, pretty much just uh, gloves off, do whatever you want, to, so to speak. Uh, it gets super exciting. And today we've seen almost almost touring car action in some respects. Uh, some of the drivers have definitely got a bit argy-bargy, some banging of wheels, some uh, pushing other drivers off track. Uh, just gently, and uh, gone back to warm up again here. Think yeah, maybe the... just going to be a couple more minutes before we do go racing. Yeah, I don't think the grid was set. I don't know whether we're still waiting for Renick Hoekstra. I think Wing's back now. Uh, oh, yeah, he is. Actually. He is. So we're just... Just, I think just waiting. I think other people have gone as well. I think we've lost uh... Niels Brugman. Yeah, we lost Niels. We lost Niels, Niels Brugman there. So, yeah. Gotta wait now. Okay, so we are actually waiting for Neil's hit. There he is. Yay! Just as I say that, he pops back in. So I think we are finally ready to go. It's uh, it's taking a little bit more time than usual. Apologies for that. Uh, thank you very much if you stuck around to uh, see what happens here. And uh, believe me, I'm sure it's going to be worth it in the end to see uh, this race too finally get in the way after all these minor issues that we've had. It's the uh, first race of the season. Probably didn't help that it uh, appears we had an update or something at, at just at the wrong time. But uh, at least it wasn't during a race that that happened. So anyway, we are now going to the race and all the drivers are populating the grid. Uh, getting their cars out there with uh, 30 seconds left to go. And we'll run through the grid once they get going again. But uh, just to confirm that it is the top 10 that have swapped their places for race two from their finishing positions in race one and then from 11th downwards is effectively where all the drivers finished or retired uh, by the end of uh, race one there so i hope that clears all of that up for you then as we get down to the final few seconds and the final few drivers pop onto the grid as well so right now we do actually have all 30 drivers who have uh, turned up here on the grid so no one's currently starting from the pit lane hopefully no disconnect. So Chris Kinsman then leads them away from Wesley Stefano in second place. Jeffrey Fournier, uh, of course, who led a little bit in, third, in the first race, is in third place with uh, Roy Stroten or Race Team Stroten in fourth. Chris Shepard from Autoforce in fifth with Stefan Ruart. I'm sure he'll be looking to improve on his uh, position. Fifth place in race one. Uh, this time around, he doesn't have to pit, so hopefully. Uh, he won't have any issues there. Spend a brief to positive sim races in 7th with Tobias Olsen, but Ice Cold in 8th. Wopke Hoekstra, CM Tech is in ninth with Lars Brugman, but positive sim racing in 10th. Matt Richards then on the 6th row, TG racing with Johan Lindbergh, the second of the Ice Cold cars in 12th. Aidan Polson is in 13th with Jacob Pegg in 14th place, and Garrett De Vries will. Uh, line up in 15th place that completes the first half of the field and the second half of the field is well and truly started by Terran Crack for the TG Racing Team in 16th place there then Joe Watt 17th uh, in JP Performance's car number 17 sorry number 77 starts in 17th then Serge Rosavid away 18th place Casper Arnwright for Performance Racing is in 19th then it's Volker van der Broek in 20th Richard Brooks 21st in the other JP car then it is Daniel Sharanku not good race one for him. He'll start 22nd for race two. 
Rob Mason, 23rd in one of the Saks cars. Then it's Mike Quint, 24th for MDR Motorsports. Intrepid Autosports, Niels Voss is 25th from Niels Brugman. So Niels and Niels to rock out row 13. The number 30 car of Brugman driving for Wouters is 26th. Stanford, Eric Stanford, 27th after not taking the start of race one. Then Ring Hawks are 28th. Then Antonio Hiranovic, 29th. And Daniel Brewer rounding out the back of the rows. So it's not an all enterprise front row, it's an all enterprise back row. And uh, well, they can only go up from here. Yep, they certainly can. They can only look at this one positively, and uh, I have certainly got some big, uh, big names started in the back. Then Brewer, Hilryanovich, Niels Brugman, Mike Quint, Rob Mason, Sharanku, all 22nd and down. So that's a lot of uh, fast drivers who could certainly carve their way through the field here. So we'll have to watch out for that, uh, but we'll also be watching out to the front as well because Chris Kinsman is leading the field around that car definitely reminds me of a, a Jordan when I look at it an old Jordan when uh, you see it from the front with the it black wings of a modern Renault yeah in a way it is a bit like a modern Renault as well uh, I don't know why it just seems to be the shade of the yellow that yeah. they've used but uh, whatever it is it's a beautiful looking car and they've got some great looking cars uh, definitely a colorful field this time around in uh, GP3 so uh, great to see great to identify the drivers from as well uh, as they all line up on the front row and beyond so Josh I know it's a difficult one again but who are you going to go for this time if it goes his way Fournier if it doesn't Chris Shepard interesting stuff that is uh, certainly interesting indeed I'm going to take a bit of a stab here I'm going to say that Rolt's going to come back from his pit issues in race one and he's going to take the race to victory then so here we go we're already lighting up the lights and they're about to go out and it's a good start by most of the drivers at the front here it looks like Fournier's got a very good start and he's already looking to find a way back but he got he got a bit of a box in there because Stefano and Kingsford are side by side they go side by side through to run and look at that Stefano comes out in front and Fournier's gone through as well they're now side by side go down towards uh, turn three here and it looks like Fournier is going to come out of it oh Kismet's gone on they've all gone off into turn one absolute craziness here Fournier has somehow managed to hold on to the lead Roy Schroeder takes second Kinsman uh, could cause all that it's in third place Olsen in fourth and Shepard in fifth but that was absolutely crazy there oh uh, it was half, half the field into the gravel trap it seemed it was uh, Truly crazy, and oh, Kismet's having an absolute nightmare here. He's gone off again. Oh, there's a car up in the background as well. I didn't catch who that was, uh, but that was a big off as well. And so Kismet down tonight, but Jeffrey Fournier leads the field away for the first half of the lap. But already Roy Schroeder's on his tail and looking hungry here. we about two tenths of a second between them. So Schroeder's definitely got on it early on with Olsen and Shepard side by side towards turn nine at Carton Dwell. Uh, luckily, Olsen holds on to it and Shepard just slots back in and thinks better of it and decides to try and line him up here. Uh, looks like Schroeder's a little bit too far away for having a challenge for the lead, but uh, Shepard's looking around the outside of Olsen. Olsen has to break on the inside for Ascari there. He just runs a little bit wide and that gives Shepard the inside line for the next corner. They're side by side, but Olsen's going to have the inside line for the penultimate corner instead. And he holds on to that place. Ruel tries to look. Oh, there's cut up behind. Have a look there, and uh, it looks like Brookman just got clipped by, uh, I think that was Hoekstra, going for the penultimate corner and lost a couple of positions there. Yeah, not good for Hoekstra at all. He's lost position. Just to go back to that incident, I think it was a very rare one. Do interrupt as if something interesting happens, by the way, Sam Jones. But yeah, Chris Kinsman seemed to just miss his break in, and he came in on short and clipped him there. That tagged Roy around. Then Chris hit the back of Jeffrey Fournier, tagged him around. Fournier was then straightened out by Stefano, though. And all went round there, and then Ruel goes into the back of Kinsman, and then we got the cars trying to go down the inside. Kinsman loses positions and the ensuing battles from there. Kinsman now down in 29th place, but Fournier is still holding the lead. He'll be very happy he got straightened out by Wesley Stefano. Hey, yeah, he will be. It looked like he was uh, going to be in the gravel trap for a second in that incident to, to turn three, but it all sorted itself out in the end. But yeah, an absolute disaster for Kinsman, it has to be said. Right now, though, Fournier has uh, seven tenths of a second lead over Schroten. And then further back, it's another two seconds to Olsen in third place. Uh, holding off Shepard at the moment with Ruot in third. Hoekstra, uh, sorry, Ruot in fifth, I should say. Hoekstra in sixth. Uh, Polson up to seventh. So great start by Polson to jump all the way up into seventh place. And uh, last Brugman in eighth place is Hoekstra. 
up the inside then of Rural to get the place into Ascari. Good move there. Uh, picks up uh, fifth place and uh, he'll set his sights now on Chris Evans ahead. Yeah, he's having a good run at the moment. Uh, he's working, just trying to catch back up with Chris Shepard. Obviously, uh, one of the picks of the race if he didn't go out for Forney. Forney, though, is leading at the moment. Uh, great props to Daniel Brewer as well for Enterprise TV from the back of the grid to 16th in just two laps. That is pretty good stuff from Brewer. Making his way up the field nicely now. And in fact, chasing both Brugman and Azevedo in a turn one. Yeah, they were all passing away, aren't they? Brewer's battle backed out a bit there. And uh, it looks like Brugman gets the position. Uh, into 14th and Brewer tried to follow Brewer as well but he just had to settle back and now look at that Brooklyn's having to go defensive and ah, Brewer's going to try and go around uh, the, well, the up the inside of oh! the two of them they're free wide and look at that Brewer's done it he's got the position he's got both of them what a move by Brewer yeah, no, without contact. But if you're going to stick it on the inside, do so it starts. You rang him off, though. And oh, almost oh, gets tagged, but he managed to go off. Richards does go off, avoiding Shiranka, though. He's going to rejoin the track. Shiranka has dropped track position. But yes, oh, more contact behind Peg involved with Onrine there. And that is not great, but uh, you know, not massive contact. But what a move, indeed, from Daniel Brewer just to stick it on the inside of everybody. He went to the right of the inside. He was given the minimum possible room. There was Argy Bargy, and he managed to scythe his way through. Through. Great stuff from Daniel Brewer there to get through into that place. Yeah, brilliant stuff, and uh, well, that's that's great stuff for him. And uh, he's at least given himself a chance of picking up some more points here and recovering from that issue in race one and up ahead of him. It's all going up as well. Got to Brees and Stefano battling away with Joe Watts right in the mix as well. It's a good free car scrap. Uh, so further up as well. Interesting stuff, Josh. Uh, let me know if anything happens, but uh, Roy Schroten is on the medium tyres in second place, whereas Fournier is on the soft tyres. So this maybe is something that's going to develop as the race goes on. Is Fournier going to come back into the clutches of Schroten, or is uh, Schroten just not going to quite have the pace here? Uh, to keep up with him, that's going to be really it, interesting to see. It depends really on how the tyres are going to wear in terms of where Hulkster dives on the inside of Shepard in the meanwhile into turn three, gets Gig, but then goes wide, Shepard on the outside, gets the overlap back, and Shepard straight back through, but then he goes wide, and then Hulkster tries to get him again. This is a great battle between the two, as we've lost in Eric Stanford, but yeah, to go after that comment about the tyres, depends if Schroten can make them last as long, uh, maybe he can outlast. Uh, Maybe even like last Ruot, because if Ruot's tyres don't last, you lose time overall, and that will put it back into Shorten's hands. But uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see what happens here. Hawkstrand, though, dives on the instead of Shepard. Here he goes back for another move, but this time around he pulls it off. There, Hoekstra at the clock chicane takes fourth place, and so that's another position picked up. Shepard back into fifth, and Aidan Paulson still having a, a, a great race here in uh, sixth place now, and he's onto the back of Shepard already, so. Looking for a potential top five. Two guys behind him, Stefan Ruart and Lars Brugman. They're going to go side by side down towards the Scarry as well. Brugman's trying to go around the outside to get the position. Interestingly enough, these two are also on the medium tyres. As Chris Shepard has gone off in front as well. Rejoins the track, but he's lost the position. So pulsing up into fifth. Shepard down sixth. Yeah, problems for Shepard then, and oh, it's a bit curvy again, and that Ruel's going to be really touching distance to the Englishman. He's going to look down the inside as the Dutchman, and then Brugman, just in case something happens, is right there as well. But let's not forget, Paulson's not far ahead. Effectively, this is the four-way fight. Brugman's going to try to go down the inside of both, and Ruel goes defensive. He does this time. Ruel's got defensive. He's going to be all over the place in the second part of the third chicane, and just about to... Holds on to it, but Brugman again having to go around the outside as we go towards turn three. Can he get it done this time around? Breaks late, but so does Ruolt, and Ruolt's gonna just hold it. Brugman's tried to keep the inside line open. Oh, oh there's contact! No. Brugman just about stops for it from going around, but that's a huge loss of time there, and he's just about gonna keep the position from Lindbergh. Yeah, just about held that, that one. Ru I think Ruel just cut over over Brooklyn a bit, to be honest. Lars was trying to make the corner. Stefan came in, cut him up a bit, and, well, it was not loads of time lost, but enough to put Brooklyn under pressure from Lindbergh, so that's going to annoy him slightly, really, to be honest. Yeah, so, Brooklyn and Niels Brooklyn and Brewer close. There as well. These two batted for 10th and 11th place, and Brewer takes a position then. So Daniel Brewer up into 10th place from the back row of the grid that is truly impressive and uh, done in about four and a half laps as well 
bit. It looks like Niels Brugman is uh, not going to just lay down and let him keep that temp spot. He's certainly Ooh, banning away. Oh my goodness, he's gone so wide there. He's definitely going to lose that place, and sure, he does. Uh, whew, just about kept it <laughs> out the wall, though. Gone so wide there, he makes me look thin. But yeah, well, <laughs> Daniel Burrow just having a bit of an excursion there, and that's not really gone his way. I hope that hadn't ever. Okay, it's not really, you know, much you can do when you start going wide, though. I, I take them, I, t I jest with them, but it is so easy to go wide there, you know. Just clip the curb, upset the car's aero, jump a bit. So easy to do, I would have probably been able to, you know, it's, it's easy enough to do. It's not, you know, even the best can trip up, and Daniel Brewer is one of the best. So, proving that point there, and Brewer just got to try and catch up back to the Brugman now. Yep, he's got to try and uh, just uh, regain what he had. And uh, just go again because he's been impressive so far, really has been. Of course, uh, Niels Brugman started quite far back as well after retiring in race one, so also doing an excellent job. And uh, uh, both of these guys probably deserving of being in the top 10 come the end of this race, but uh, we'll have to see how all of that pans out. Meanwhile, Stefan Ruart uh, has caught up to the back of Chris Shepard now for sixth place and has a look down the inside at Clark Chicane. And oh, Shepard just uh, goes for a spin there. Bit of a late turn in there, and uh, well, back end just didn't want to take the corner. Oh, yeah, he just unfortunately he's going had around. that off there. And Shepard, well, he's it's not going well for him anymore. He's down in 12th now. Yeah, he just spins in. Ruol didn't touch him, he lost the back end of his own accord. And uh, well, yeah, he just went round. And Shepard had to yield places and position. Now he's chasing Shivango. Game really this was going as well, but I tell you what well, who's going well for Jeffrey Fournier who's leading this race. I said if he gets in the lead and he stays there, he can win this race for the Canadian team, Stacks Racing of course, and he might full while do it. Yeah, you certainly did say that, Josh, and it, it's looking good at the moment at the halfway stage. It's completed lap six out of twelve, so uh, exactly at the halfway point. And uh, interestingly enough, those soft tires just seem to be holding on at the moment for Fournier. He's still doing consistent 38s, uh, Schroeder as well is also in the 38s every single lap, uh, so there's not much to choose between the two of them, and uh, two seconds it is uh, on the track, uh, but certainly uh, Fournier, if he keeps this up, is looking very good indeed, but uh, Schroeder is certainly keeping him honest, and this could go all the way down to the wire between these two, and it's going to be about who can keep, remain consistent over these 12 laps. Yeah, it's all about consistency now over the remaining laps of the race we've had six obviously we're on seven there is 12 in this race Fournier gets a little bit of a blip there nothing really it's going to cost a massive time though in this race and Schroten just chasing down now as well and Hoekstra as well also in close Ruolt having a good battle as well Horanovic I think it's just maybe dropped a place or two but he's down in 18 so really trying to focus on this top battle at the moment lots of things can still happen in this race though we may only be six laps in but that's only six laps still six to go Yes. We lost Shepard, that's why. Ah, oh, I was wondering what was going on because I saw I saw that uh, Bird moved back up into the top 10. I was wondering who had disappeared. So that's a real shame for Shepard then. He had uh, just dropped down into 7th, uh, wasn't it, after being passed by Rort. But uh, certainly, whatever happened, uh, that's, that's really disappointing because I think he was on for a top 10 um, come the end of the race. Unfortunately for him, that's a DNF, but uh, hopefully we'll see him back out next time. He had a good race one, a very solid effort, and uh, just kept his nose clean. Uh, but unfortunately it hasn't worked out for him in race two. Meanwhile, Lars Brugman is catching up with Stefan Rotz now for six. So uh, these two, both of the mediums, of course, uh, we'll see if they are going to continue to get better or not, as the case may be as this, uh, as this race goes on. Hoekstra as well, he's onto the back of Olsen for third place and it's tight between those two, Hoekstra just made a little bit of a mistake there and uh, lost a bit of time and all of a sudden Roy Schroeder's all, ba all on the oh, back of Fournier, is. so what's happened? Fournier must have lost some time somewhere along the line, he's going through by the looks of it, oh he's not close enough here but he's, oh and touches Fournier! Wow that's the second time then a Fournier has had contact when leading the race today and he's down in fifth place now and light up the tyres all over the place. He's dropped positions to uh, Schroeder, Olsen, Hoekstra and Paulson. And uh, I don't know how you're going to go with that one, Josh. I don't know whose fault that was. But uh, certainly for Fournier, it just means now oh. that that's probably any chance he had of winning out the window. Oh, that was marginal. 
California. Oh yeah, it was the slightest touch from Roy Schroeder. Sends him into a spin. So sensitive these cars. Fournier down to fifth now. And he's not going to be happy about that. It was so marginal, though. Just the tiniest of touches. I almost thought Fournier lost it on his own for a second. But then I checked the replay in slow motion. And there was a tiny bit of contact between the two of them. Just so marginal between Shorten and Fournier. So, potential, uh, potentially controversial instant there. But that does mean that Roy Shorten now leads the race. And on those medium tyres, uh, I don't think it's going to get any worse for him in terms of his pace. Uh, so that's looking good. Although behind him, Olsen and Hoekstra are side by side for second place into turn three there. And Hoekstra just has to slot back in. I think uh, Hoekstra needs to try and get past Olsen if he's going to have any chance of winning this one because uh, he probably is the quicker of the two drivers. He was in uh, race one. Uh, it's probably the case here as well. But uh, the more time he spends trying to get past Olsen, the more he's using up those soft tyres and the more the laps click away. We're already on to lap 9 out of 12. Yeah, and it's it goes by so quickly, the sprint race, doesn't it? That's why they call it a sprint rather than anything else. You know, it really is a case of you've got to run for this because it's, you know, you got to get straight on. You can't dilly-dally about in a sprint race. It is a sprint. It is not a marathon. No, it's certainly... Certainly not a marathon at all, and right now Fournier has got a lot of pressure behind him as well. He's got Bruot and Brookman all over the back of him. Uh, so just seeing if Hoekstra is going to go for a pass. No, he's not. So back to Fournier, Bruot and Brookman. And it looks like Bruot's actually coming under a lot of pressure from Brookman. Also into Scari. Brookman had a bit of a go there. And Bruot had to take a defensive line. But again, he's onto the back of Fournier himself. It looks like a very interesting freeway scrap here. Yeah, very interesting race heating up here. Vanderbrunk obviously traffic at the moment for short and moves straight to the inside. Gets out of the way nicely, does Marco. And uh, Hoekstra Olsen still a battle for second going on. Interestingly, heating up as well. Champion versus Olsen, number one versus number 71. So 70 numbers between them and a championship. But Wupke Hoekstra has had a very solid weekend here. Race meeting, rather. If not a winning one, a solid one as Olsen comes over. Yeah, oh, that's a uh, time lost for them, isn't it? Uh, as uh, Roart's actually got past Fournier into turn one. So that moves Roart up into fifth now. He's, uh, his uh, medium tyres definitely started to work for him. Brookman is going to try and follow Roart through and get past Fournier. He's all over his gearbox right now. And it's uh, just so tight around this part of the track that uh, not quite close enough. But he's got a chance to clutch the cane if he can get there. And that's what oh! Hoekstra has done. Oh, but he's gone wide. Yeah, he overshot it. He almost shot it, trying to get past Olsen. That's going to be net time gain for the Swedes. He's going to go through then, and Hawksworth's going to lose time and start to fall into the clutches of a certain Aiden Paulson, who's having a stunning race. He certainly is, isn't he? From 13th on the grid. Let's not forget that. He started 13th, and he's up in fourth place right now. And in with a chance of a podium here, because he's got the two guys in second and third ahead of him. He can see them on track. He just needs to close up a little bit more and put pressure on them and he's got a real shot of it as Vlas Brookman has got past Fournier. Oh wait, hold on a sec, so what's going on here? Fournier has gone wide at Scari. Oh uh, yes. I think Brookman has let him back through so maybe he felt that that was his fault. Uh, there was no contact I believe. Well actually yes, uh, Brook oh yeah, Brookman did a bit of a dive bomb. Clyde a bit and then let him straight back through. Very, very sportsmanlike from Lars, Lars Brugman there. That's what we like to see. You know, we knew we went down the inside, maybe had a bit of contact. He got through through contact. Lars didn't like that. Let Fournier straight back through. Jeffrey will be very thankful for that. Now they're going to have a nice fair battle as we have completed 10 laps. We are on the last lap. But what a Schroelton locks up there. This is not over. It certainly isn't. He's got a 4.6 second lead. But I think that might have come down after that little mistake. Uh, Olsen still has Hoekstra all over the back of him. Uh, these two, their battle has uh, really slowed themselves down over the last couple of laps. And uh, that's definitely given Pulse a chance. So Ruelt's catching him fairly quickly as well. Lindbergh, then he's definitely benefited by Ice Cold. He's up in sick. Uh, Fournier back down seventh. Brugman, Lars Brugman in eighth. And Niels Brugman in ninth place. Brugman still holding on to that temp for... Uh, spot and uh, no one's really behind him to challenge him but uh, still there in 10th and that's certainly uh, good for him and for Niels as well the two drivers uh, should be happy with their performance so far in race two just looking then is Olsen gonna hold on to his second place or is uh, Hoekstra gonna have a go at him 
down into Ascari, he's thinking about it, but just sits behind him, still uh, waiting patiently. He's only got one lap to go after this to have a go for second. Yeah, only a little bit left to go, and you know, Wubke's not got much time to go for it. Roy Shorten is about to start the final laps by the look of it, and if Wubke's going to go for Tobias, it's going to have to be this lap as he gets a slide on out of the final turn. He's pushing it hard, isn't he? Yeah, he certainly is. Here we go then, Roy Shroten uh, heads towards turn one. He's got another back marker ahead of him, but uh, at the moment it's all looking very good. Although it has to be said, also definitely caught up by about a second on that last lap, uh, probably due to that mistake that Shroten had, as I think there's been a bit of a, swip, a swap around. Oh, 48 has got up again, oh, just about Jeffrey. collects it. Yeah, oh, Brewer threw him as well. Brewer threw him in the weight and chasing Brookman. This has been a great race from Daniel Brewer. But the back of the grid, now he's going for Lars Brookman here. Oh, what a move. Oh, he can't get through. What a move it would have been if he could, though. Brewer on a sudden charge. Can he go from the back to sixth? He could do. He couldn't see. It's so close. It could be 10th place, though, because 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th are all nose to tail, pretty much. This is an exciting battle. It's a shame we're on the last lap because uh, I think this one could rage on for a few laps longer than this. And it, it's all going to have to be concluded, though, as uh, Schroten is coming round towards the final sector now. So he's nearly home oh. and dry. Olsen just about holding on from Hoekstra. Oh, Lindbergh, Lindbergh, and yep, Brugman having a goal. Brugman's oh. going to go. He's, he's going off the track to get through. I'm trying to take an alternate room, but it's not working. Brewer's that desperate. He wants this sixth. He can taste it. He thinks it's within his grasp. He is going all cylinders. All six of those cylinders firing at maximum to get through. I don't think it's going to work. Brugman and Lindbergh, I'm trying to focus as long as we can, but all sudden, we're going to watch Shorten. Yep, here comes Shroten round the final corner there. So he will take this race to victory here. Roy Schroten, an excellent strategy to pick the medium tyres. A great race as well. He takes the win here in Melbourne. Olsen holds on second. Hoekstra in third. Paulson in fourth. And Ruart's coming home in fifth. But what happens behind? Oh, Jeffrey Fournier. He got he talked tired again. He's actually doing it in reverse. He's going to reverse over the line to try and save as much time as possible instead of having to turn around. He's just, oh, what actually happened? It's not going to work. It's not going to work, or he might lose track position here at the looks of it. It's going to be so close. This is dramatic. Look at Jermanko. He's going to cut through us. It's Stefano. And Fournier jumps on his skate. Unconventional. Oh, we, I think Fournier just came over into uh, Lindbergh, perhaps, and he got tipped round. Then he just stuck it in reverse to try and save as much time as he could. Didn't work, though. Still lost out to... Uh, Duranku and Stefano in the end of it. But yeah, Roy Short with a win from Olsen, Hawkstra, Paulson, Brewart, great drives from Paulson and Brewer, it must be said. Brewer from the back of the grid to seventh is stunning. It, it really is. It truly is an incredible performance. I think uh, uh, him alongside Aidan Paulson, uh, the two drivers of the race for me that have done an absolutely stellar job of uh, picking their way through the field. Uh, Nothing against Roy Schroeder, though, a great result for him, but uh, uh, to pick up that many positions has been excellent. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's just have a quick look at that then. So after Ruart, it was Brugman, then Brewer in 6th and 7th, Lindbergh in 8th, Niels Brugman in 9th, Sharanku in 10th, Stefano in 11th, Fournier in 12th, uh, Asvedo in 13th, with Jacob Pegg in 14th, Horjanovic in 15th place. Kinsman then recovered to 16th after that disastrous lap one where he found himself going from pole to the back of the grid. Casper Unwin was in 17th with Rob Mason in 18th with Garrett DeVries in 19th. Joe Watts was in 20th place. Then uh, Sven DeVries actually retired on the last lap. Richard Brooks and uh, Marco van der Broek finished uh, one lap down. And uh, then the rest of the field all retired as well. So quite high attrition rate there in race two it has to be said but an uh, <laughs> entertaining one an absolutely fantastic battle between uh well the top few guys and then sixth to tenth as well uh i, I don't think uh, we uh, had time to breathe in that second race did we josh it was that good oh entertainment and speeds really brilliant brilliant stuff absolutely great racing and uh woo! brilliant Yep, and uh, I can't do the maths in my head because I'm not like, good at doing all this maths, but I have a feeling that to coming out of all of this, it might be a tie between Tobias Olsen and Wopke Hoekstra for the lead oh, of the championship. Be. 
Yeah, this this is a close title, and it's not even begun this season. I think we've already got some people who we can interview. Excellent User stuff. Off Let's, uh, well, get I probably should have warned you we're bringing it in there. User was moved to so your we'll, we'll uh, bring the guys in for interviews. We'll have a, a couple of interviews, maybe a few more as well. And, uh, well, I think uh, the best way to start this one off, then, of course, it's uh, the new GP3 season. And uh, the best way to start off the interviews is to have the guy who won the first race of the uh, WCS GP3 season. And that, of course, was uh, Lars Brugman. And uh, Lars, uh, a great result there in race one and an entertaining race in race two as well. You must be uh, pleased to get a win and some great points on the board already. Yeah, the win is great. But unfortunately, I'm not very happy with uh, the way I got the win in the end because of the contact between me and uh, Joffrey. So I apologize to him for that once again. I don't know exactly what happened. I thought I was in front of him, and then uh, obviously I was not. So that cost him a good result as well. User was but I was very happy channel. with the pace. I uh, I didn't expect it at all. I didn't really have much practice at all before this uh, this race. So really happy with the results in the end. Yeah, excellent stuff, and uh, really, really uh, great win in the first race as well. How difficult was it out there, of course, with uh, the new rules in terms of the tyres and the new cars as well? Uh, well, to be honest, I, f I thought the soft tyres would last a bit longer. Um, they In the first race, I was really surprised at how quickly they wore off. So that made me, in, that in the end meant <clears throat> I had to stop earlier than I had anticipated. So that threw the strategy around a bit. And for race two, I'm really not sure yet which is quicker, if you go on the softs or on the hard tires. Because in the end, I was feeling really quick, but because of all the battling, User I didn't really use channel. the pace, if you if you get what I mean. So, yeah, it's interesting for sure. It makes a great uh, mix-up between the strategies and can really throw the race around. Yeah, good stuff. So, um, of course, after winning that first race, are you confident then that you uh, can push on and maybe... Uh, I've got the pace to win more races this season. Oh, who knows? I can't really say at this stage yet. Uh, if I will, I hope I'll be at the front. I know I'm going to miss some races, so... Uh, yeah, a full-on championship challenge probably isn't really going to happen, but I hope to be there to challenge for some race wins and have some good battles along the way. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, once again, congratulations, Lars, and... Uh, Good stuff in uh, both the races, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much. Right then, he uh, may have been the last guy to join us for interviews, but he was certainly the first guy across the line in race two, and that, of course, was uh, Roy Schroten. Uh, a bit of a different strategy to uh, a few drivers around the uh, field by going on to the medium tyres for race two, but it, it looked like it was one that paid off for you and uh, a really good result there. Yeah, I was in the warm-up lap and I saw that my team placed the hot tires underneath. Uh, I planned on the soft, but User was moved I, to your channel. Uh, I decided to just go with it. It's a long race and I was able to keep my ground at the start with uh, someone spinning uh, inside the group in front of me. I was able to go through uh, uh, quite nicely. I uh, was able to um, gain some uh, time to the guys behind me, but I, left some, uh, I lost some time to Jo. Um, but then as the race progressed, uh, his tires started to fall off and my tires were just uh, keeping their pace. Um, and I uh, just took it easy and tried to catch up with him. Uh, and then uh, when I was just about to pass him, something happened, I don't know exactly sure. Uh, seeing his car, it looked like I hit him, but on my screen there was still some space between us. So uh, I don't know, maybe it were his tires who... Uh, which was started to go down, I don't know. But uh, after that, I just decided to take it easy. And yeah, my first uh, WCS win, it's, it feels quite amazing. Yeah, it was uh, really great stuff and uh, really pleased for you as well because uh, the way you did it, it was uh, down to a lot of pace. Would you say then, uh, barring that uh, slight incident with Fournier, um, would you say that you probably would have got past him even if the, he didn't spin it there or if there wasn't any slight contact? Do you still feel you were confident enough to, to pass him and maybe at another point in the track? Yeah, I'm very sure about that. His tyres, uh, just half a certain, he lost one and a half seconds. So his tyres must have been very bad. He must have pushed very hard in the beginning. So maybe that that explains his spin. I don't know. But 
as I said on my screen, there was still some space, but I don't know. Um, but I, yeah, I felt my tires were still good. Uh, and even towards the end, I was still able to uh, set the same lap time. So I'm pretty sure I would have catched him anyway. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And uh, are you hoping then that uh, you could do more of the same in the rest of the season? Are you happy with the way the car is and the setup and everything? Are you feeling confident with these uh, cars? Yeah, the car feels very good. Even in the pre-season testing, it felt uh, pretty amazing. I had quite some pace in it. Um, I wasn't able to test so much for this race, so I hope for more in the next races for sure. Good stuff. Well, uh, once again, congratulations to you as well for that uh, win in race two. And uh, we'll hope to see you in a couple of weeks' time as well. Thank you. And I hope next time I'll have the nice RTS livery as well. Because now yeah. the one time that I win and I don't have it here. So <laughs> it's always the same as the yeah, but It's uh, just your luck. But yeah, uh, it would be great to see that as well because uh, we are missing out on a couple of liveries there. But uh, I'm sure it'll be a good looking one. Thank you. All right then, so uh, we've got uh, a few more interviews to draw through, so bear with us, but it's certainly worth uh, listening to all these uh, encounters, especially after the first race of the season. So it's a bit of a difficult one about who to go to next, because I have a feeling that uh, the next two drivers I have to interview are tied the lead in the championship, but uh, since I could see his name before, another guys, I'll go to Tobias Olsen, and Tobias, uh, you're... Uh, best result might have come in race two, but uh, in my opinion, your best performance was in race one to come all the way from 14th on the grid to finish in third place. That was a, a great performance and an excellent result for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I had a really, really bad qualifying. Um, the same for you and my teammate. You also had a really bad qualifying, but yeah, I'm not really sure where I gained the time in race one, but... I was up there in third place out of nowhere, but yeah, it's really nice. And race two was really fun. I did some mistakes, unfortunately, but yeah, it was nice. Good points. Uh, I'm happy, so. You're looking strong in these cars. Uh, quite similar to how you yes, were, uh, especially at the start channel. of uh, the last season, Tobias. Uh, would you say you prefer these cars or about the same uh, compared to the uh, old F3s? Um, I think they feel quite the same. These are a little bit harder to drive, I think, uh, and the tires are a bit different. Um, but I really think feel my my strong side is in the in the races. I think not in the qualifying in these cars. Uh, it was the same in in the, the last mod, I think. So, yeah. Good stuff. Are you uh, confident then of uh, picking up a race win or two uh, in the coming few races? Yeah, I think so. If I can manage the the tires, I think I can can achieve something good. I think. Excellent. Well, uh, Tobias, thanks for joining us for the uh, interviews today, and uh, good haul of points for you as well. Looking very exciting for your championship chances early on the season. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Right then, um, on to our next guy, and that will be our reigning champion, Wupke Hoekstra. And Wupke, after a, a fantastic run at the end of the last season, uh, it was maybe not quite the race wins that you were picking up then, but still uh, a good couple of results with a podium in race one and in race two. Yeah, you're right. Um, I can't complain with the results. It's uh, amazing to get two podiums, especially since the field is a lot stronger than... Uh, last season so um, yeah I'm quite pleased with the results with the pace I had I I didn't think I would be able to keep up with the top guys to be honest um, I started practice a bit late and um, I wasn't feeling too confident in the car I kept making mistakes and I kept going off so um, yeah the race was all about survival for me but um, two podiums is more than I could have hoped for that's uh, scary stuff. That uh, should we be expecting more from you in the coming few races? Then um, I hope so, but I can't promise you anything. Uh, <laughs> maybe this is just a lucky race, and I'm sure the other guys will um, get used to the cars as well. So it's going to be tough, but um, yeah, I'm just going to try to get consistent top tens once again, and uh, maybe a few race wins uh, if I can. Okay, that's a uh, very modest for a, a reigning champion, but uh, nonetheless, uh, anything. 
you found particularly difficult out there? The tyres of the cars or uh, just the track? Um, the track is uh, absolutely amazing, so that's not uh, <laughs> hard for me. Um, but yeah, the it's uh, the car is a bit unstable sometimes out of the slow corner, so it was quite hard to uh, manage sometimes. The rear would just start sliding all over the place, so you really need to keep your uh, uh, self calm then and uh, make sure you keep the car in control because sometimes if you just um, yeah if you then if you uh, use too much of uh, the gas then you just spin around if you come out of the slow corners and that's one of the main problems I had mainly and um, the tires are fine in my opinion um, the soft and the hard are a bit close in pace but um, I'm sure that's um, only better for the races absolutely I couldn't agree more so well Keith, thank you again for coming along and a great couple of results and uh, well it's been a pleasure as always to have you so uh, good to see you in a couple of weeks time also thank you and congratulations to all the other podium finishers good stuff right uh, i think we might have a couple more guys to interview here um bit of a different one now i'm hoping he's actually there and he's not just coming to listen to the interviews firsthand but it it's an old friend of mine uh, a guy who i've often spent a lot of hours talking to and uh, blabbering away uh commentating other series elsewhere and of course he is the uh, manager of enterprise Mr. gp Ryan, who had excited. their uh, debut this season so uh, james kirk welcome uh, welcome along welcome to the wcs league and uh, uh, a difficult race one but it looked uh, much better in race two for your team oh what are you talking about we planned those disconnects in race one we wanted the rest of the field in race two with how good we can cut through the field uh no I, it's, it's one of those things by any account and especially when it comes to disconnect so our factor two crashing it's uh terrible because there's nothing that they can do to User rescue disconnected from your channel User anything along those lines but uh, a drive from uh, from Dan and Antonio as well. I mean, um, recover and in itself is impressive. I mean, okay, I think uh, right. I think we might the have lost you there a bit. The first oh, sorry. lap of race one. <laughs> Sorry about that, James. I think we lost you a little bit there as well. Uh, I think uh, I think it's not only your team who've had a few issues here today. I think uh, your, your internet might out. also be struggling as well. And oh, he's actually gone. So. There we go. There's the disconnection. <laughs> it's a, it it's wouldn't be a, James Kirk without it. <laughs> it's been a full house of uh, disconnections for Enterprise here today then. All I needed uh, to do was disconnect and we have gone full circle. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. I'm, I'm sure we'll to, be back. What a way to uh, what a way to interview a team manager. Uh, it's a shame we didn't quite get all of that from James, but uh, I think uh, to sum it all up, really, he was uh, probably a little bit disappointed about race one, but uh, certainly more yeah. pleased with the way race two went. So, uh, right. uh, so I mean, I've, I've commentated with James before as well. Like, it wouldn't be a James Kirk broadcast without uh, internet issues. It just seems to have these gremlins sometimes with his internet. He can't help, and honestly, it, it just technology. You know what it is, but. You know, it's almost become a trademark now that at some point something goes wrong. But hey, he is he is a good commentator. And uh, well, we did like talking to him for what little time we got. Yep, certainly. And uh, for what few words we actually managed to hear. But uh, Josh, I think we've got uh, one last guy to interview. Uh, I think uh, you're here probably to speak more about uh, the league than uh, how your racer went. But still, just to summarise, Sven, uh, Sven de Vries is here. Uh, you picked up a fourth in race one and uh, had a bit more of a difficult race too, uh, actually retiring from the race. But uh, in terms of it all, in terms of everything that went on today, uh, it looked uh, pretty positive out there. Good field, uh, some good racing, and uh, we were thoroughly entertained. Yeah, just uh, yeah, like you like you said, I just wanted to uh, say some words uh, as a league administration part. Um, yeah, I just wanted to you know to give a shout out to uh, to you guys for doing an awesome uh, broadcast. I noticed we had a lot of uh, people watching, a lot of people enjoying, and a shout out to all the the teams and drivers today. We had a, a massive feel, lots of uh, nice liveries on the cars. Um, uh, amazing first lap in in race one. Uh, you know we really encourage people to uh, to drive clean, and uh, you know especially race one seemed to be very clean of course there's always going to be some minor incidents and you know it's, it's melbourne so it's, it's a tricky track but 
people seem to uh, respect each other quite a lot. So I uh, just wanted to thank everybody for doing that. That's how we'd like to race. Uh, and other than that, you know, very, uh, very pleased to see what uh, with the results too. I mean, not necessarily for myself, but to to see Roy Schroten uh, win race two, for example, and to see Dan Brewer cut through a field from 31st to 7th, you know, that, that's just, uh, it, it's awesome to see. I really had a good time, regardless of my own results. Yeah, good stuff. Well, uh, thank you for everything you said there, Sven. And uh, I, I think, uh, I don't know about you, Josh, but I think uh, it all went pretty well today and uh, that's positive for the league, isn't it? Yep, Josh loved it that much. He's absolutely <laughs> speaking. I, I'm, I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words. Honestly, I forgot to admit myself. But yeah, great day for WCS. Great start of the season. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Great racing and fantastic, you know, stuff to commentate on. And uh, well, a very happy Sven de Reese at the end of it with how it's gone, evidently. From an organisational standpoint. Yeah, it looks that way. And uh, Sven, just uh, one more thing. We've got uh, the McGann's coming up as well uh, next week, haven't we? And uh, should we be expecting some good stuff from that car as well? Absolutely. Uh, people seem really positive about that car. Uh, you know, in deliveries, deliveries there too look awesome. We've got a full house, 14 teams, 28 drivers. Uh, you know, like I said, full grit. So we're expecting, uh, you know, awesome battles there too. Uh, it's probably going to be something similar to today. The cars are obviously a little slower and have a little less grip than uh, the GP3 cars, uh, which means I'm expecting even closer racing to today. So I'm, I'm really excited for that as well. And for you guys, obviously, to do another awesome broadcast on that. I'm sure we'll absolutely do uh, a great job of that. Um, well, Josh and I go well, of course. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just kind of jump along and uh, run with it. But uh, anyway, I think uh, I think that's enough talking here today. We've uh, certainly seen a lot of action. We've had some fantastic interviews as well. And uh, just like to say thanks again to Sven and all of his team who have set all of this up for all the competitors who have come along here today um, to make this such a strong field as well. It's been really good to see. Uh, a good start of the season. Uh, lots and lots of drivers out there with great entertainment. And uh, the fans at home as well, you guys who watch the broadcast, the drivers as well who will be watching the broadcast after the race to see uh, whether they got a bit of uh, time on the cameras. I uh, hope you enjoy the broadcast uh, as much as me and Josh have done. Uh, enjoy doing it. Uh, and I'd just like to say thanks to Josh as well for coming along. And of course, who could forget? Argo, our amazing cameraman who always does a beautiful job and we always miss you when you go and do your touring car duties but uh, well we'll have to see what happens next week uh, but that is just about all we've got time for today then uh, so just to remind you that uh, for the next race it's actually the McGann's we start off the McGann season and that's on Monday now it, it was it was uh, Wednesday's last year, but or last season, I should say, not last year. But it's all changed now. It's uh, now the touring cars will be getting those on Mondays, I believe, uh, every single week, and that always follows on from the GP freeze. And then we'll have a bit of a break after that, uh, about ten days or so, and then the following Wednesday, so that'll be Wednesday in a fortnight's time, uh, we'll be returning with the GP freeze as well. And both of those uh, rounds, round one of them again, so round two of the GP3 season, they'll be coming from the Red Bull ring. And we've all seen some fantastic battles and uh, a great place for overtaking there as well. And hopefully uh, with strong fields for both series, that is surely going to be one to look out for and certainly one you don't want to miss out on. Uh, but uh, for now, that's all we've got time for. So hopefully you can join us again and uh, continue what has been a fantastic start to this new season in WCS. Uh, but for now, it's a very good goodbye. <laughs>